Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Byrd. It's time for the Thursday afternoon, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast. And I'm just checking in on you, seeing how you're doing. How are you? Yeah, you having a tough day? Ugh, I had a tough day this morning. Oh, Jesus. I fucking go out to get a cup of coffee, right? Because what else am I going to do? Huh? Grow as a person? You know? Am I going to challenge myself to be a better man? Am I going to get out of my comfort zone? No. Going to go to the same fucking coffee shop, get the same fucking coffee I always get. Because it makes me feel safe. So I get myself a cup of coffee, right? I get my wife her latte, Made sure I get her latte because, you know, that's what you do. Hey, honey, what do you, what would you like? You know, and they, oh, he's thinking about me. And then they fucking lay off for a couple of hours. <laughs> Nia's over in the corner, so I'm going to be talking a lot of shit about her until she comes over. Um, and what happens? Oh, fucking Billy Goodhart. Oh, Willie trying to do the right thing. I fucking come home and then I realize, oh, fuck, I was supposed to bring my car in for service. I forgot to do that. So I get the coffees to go. What the fuck are you doing making a coffee to go? It was a fucking joke. I make it to go. I bring it home. And then I'm going to go bring my car over for service. Right? And I go to the dealership. I don't give a fuck. Everybody's like, you know, this fucking Uber driver just gave me a whole lecture. Why Why you bring to a dealership? They charge you more fucking money. Well, you know what? Because they use the fucking right parts. They got the manual in there. And on, 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 I to torque it down or some shit. I'm not going to some boot, like just some fucking satellite school. Right? I go to Harvard, Ro- fucking Rhode Island. You know how they do that shit? Like those, those adjacent schools. Like I'm not doing that with the mechanic because the guy's going to tell me that he's using genuine Ford fucking parts. How the fuck do I know? I don't know where to look. You used all Ford parts? Oh, yeah, buddy. Yeah, they're right under the hood. Thank you. You know, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to Jiffy Loop. You know, those fucking people. All right. Those people live in the sewer. That's why, that's why they don't mind being underneath the car all fucking day, right? They got them standing there. They, they come out at night to feed. And then right at the end, before they go to bed, they change the oil and lube your cars. That's what they do. That's how they make their money to buy a little fucking burlap sack to sleep on inside the sewer systems of our great cities here in America. And what happens is, is there's, you know, they're, they're nighttime people. They're nocturnal. So when they're working on your car, half the time they forget. Half the time, Bill? Well, I've heard that they forgot. And then you drive down the street and your engine seizes. So I go to the fucking dealership. All right? I go to get in my fucking car to go to the goddamn dealership. And I'll, you know, I'm driving down the street and I'm feeling this weird pulling to one side. And then this tire pressure. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. I got a fucking flat. So I was close enough to my house. I drove back and I'm going around the car and they don't look flat. So I'm like, what the fuck? So I get in the car, I go down the road again. Same thing happens. I'm like, Jesus Christ, do I need this? Have a total fucking meltdown. FaceTime my wife, who's in the house, who got her latte, who was thinking that she married the right man. So what do I do? What do I do that with the real estate that I gain? I give it right back and throw a fucking pick six. And I call her up and fucking have a meltdown. You know, bad enough to do it, just a regular phone call. I did it in FaceTime. So it was like I was in the room. It was like I was haunting her life. I wasn't even there yet. I was there, right? So I call up AAA and those cunts, right? Now it's just like, we sent you a virtual text to make it fucking easier. It's not to make it easier. It's so you can make more money. Give me a fucking person. So of course I, I opt out of that and I wait to get a person on. And then I fucking, I, 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 I get the whole thing scheduled. And I'm like, let me fucking try this one more time. I drive down the street and nothing happens. And it's totally fucking fine. So then I have to call. I fucking cancel it. They're like, are you sure you want to cancel it? It's like, did I come off wishy-washy when I fucking talked to your computer the last time? Yes, cancel it. And then I brought it over. The, and, and now now it's, it's being, uh, now they have to look at the system that for some reason thought I had a flat tire. And I didn't. I'll tell you what fucking annoys me is I know how to change a goddamn tire. And I know how to change oil. It's just that the jack... 
that they give you and they have it bolted down and it's, I don't even know what the fuck it is. It's like a, a Jack Jason, you know, that little tree stand. And then they give you that little fucking curved piece of pipe that's supposed to start up like a fucking car in the 1920s. I got to get a real Jack. You know what I mean? I used to have that one, you know, back in the day. I have a real jack, and then I had a piece of pipe to give myself leverage back when I had my 83 Ford Ranger, right? So that was basically my morning, and now I'm back, and now I'm doing the podcast. Hey, Nia, do you want to come over? Uh, no. No? <laughs> no. You what? And I, you and I are interacting on my Instagram from now on. I am what do you mean? You are not officially resigning. I would like well, to then I'm not taking pictures of your stupid fucking food anymore. Really? Is yeah. that how it's going to go? I well, like, first of I, all... I like this partnership. Huh? <laughs> I like you, and I like when you come on the podcast, mm-hmm. and the, the people like it. Give the people what they want. Hi, people. So I was going to I was gonna announce my official <laughs> <laughs> resignation from the podcast, but your man wants it. You hear that? He wants it. <laughs> What are you talking? Why are you acting like people don't love you on the podcast? Oh, you know, I've heard some things. Oh, have you heard some things? Well, I've guess what? I've heard some things on something that I have out right now mm. that I can't promote, and I've literally, right. I've literally heard everything from, like, you know, this is a boorish piece of shit. It's mm-hmm. not even a fucking movie. That that was the extreme left. Oh, I just said movie. I guess I must well say it. Project. Project, all the way to <laughs> left, and then <clears throat> the extreme right. Is going, uh, oh my God, it's so hard to watch him give in to Hollywood woke fucking politics. Mm. But Nia, I don't give a fuck about those people. I give yeah. a fuck about the people in the middle who just watched it and said it was funny. Exactly. That's it. The people with taste. Ooh. <laughs> no, because some in the middle didn't like it, but I don't give a fuck. Right. It's like, I, I, you know, we live in a fucking world now. You're literally politicizing a stupid comedy project. <laughs> Comedy project. Also, you'll, you're Bill Burr. You know what I mean. You have a you have a tendency to divide the masses. I think that's great. Though. No, I don't. You don't think so? A no. Bit? No. No, not at all. No, all they do is report on the fucking eighteen people all the way to the left, or the I mean, eighteen people all the way to true. the right. That's all yeah. true. Yeah, that's true. You know what? You know what it's like, Nia. It's like countries talking about other countries. Oh, boy. Yeah, they do the same thing. <laughs> all these fucking people are assholes and all these people are cool. No. It's cold in here. Most people are cool. It's just the extremist cunts. That's what you have to get rid of, Nia. The extremist cunts. The, the extremist goddamn cunts. That's what we're going to call your next special. <laughs> extremist cunts. I'm running for office. Oh, God. I'm going to drain the swamp of extremist cunts. I'm going to be the first lady. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is a fantasy. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. This fantasy fantasy is I don't have to fucking deal with you giving me shit, tell me to work on my temper when I'm in the White House. I'm trying to run. I'm trying to run a country here. Uh, uh, You think that if we were in the White House, that I wouldn't continue to call you to the fucking carpet for all your bullshit and your antics? You think that's gonna stop? Well, that's what you're supposed to do. Never, never. As as my partner, you're supposed to do that. But like yeah. it, that 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 goes both ways. It absolutely goes. Both oh yeah, it does, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, it does. It, it, does. Does. Yeah, it does. It does. It does. <laughs> it does. All right. So you work on your shit, and I'll work on my shit. Is this what you call me on to the podcast for? To be combative with me? I mean, yeah. That's well, you just stuck that's yourself that's in the White House with me. Yeah. That why was my would, fantasy. Why wouldn't I be in the White House too? Why? Because maybe I want to be the first single president would never in a happen. long time. Would never happen. Billy Playboy coming in there. <laughs> I got a meeting with uh, fucking J Lo this week to talk about uh, fat kids in this country. Don't you bring my beautiful J Lo into this? I don't even know why I picked her. I, I don't know why either. She's All right. gorgeous. Can I, can, she can, sang can, at the last inauguration. Maybe that's why you thought of her. She sang at the inauguration. She did. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And that's all I'm going to say on this. Why would you do that? I don't, I don't like understand. I don't understand. I love her husband. So I'm very, I'm very pro, pro oh, J Lo. That's right. Pro J Lo. I get it. And pro Ben. You know what your ESPN is? It's like celebrity websites. ESPN? 
Well, like I, you know, I sit there and I like I watch like sports and I get into this stupid shit. Oh, this is one of your like like super over simplistic analogies. By the way, Bill. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize following celebrities was so fucking deep. No, you're not deep because you're the one that's <laughs> always going like, you know, it's kind of like when you watch The Real Housewives and it's like, Bill, I know what you're talking about. Like, you don't have to make like some sort of analogy. Like, you like this the way I like sports. It's like, yeah. That's not even what I was saying. Because okay. I was going to be like, why the fuck are you following these celebrities' lives in the relationship? And then I was me like, oh, this is just kind of like, why am I, why do I give a fuck about the Patriots not doing well this year? It's stupid. Right. Why do you, yeah, why do you wear a man's name on the back of a jersey, you know? Yeah, I, I don't do that. Normal. You don't wear jerseys. Actually. I don't wear jerseys. I'm not dating him. <laughs> I, I just, feel like I've seen you wear a hockey jersey like years ago or so, like in an old photo of you or so, like when you were a kid, you know, or like a teenager or in your 20s. But you definitely, no, you don't wear no, any I wore a jersey hockey. if I was playing pickup hockey. Right. Okay. Oh, that's what it is. That's what it is. When you used to play hockey. Yeah. And I used to go out and I would wear my Jay Miller Bruins jersey, which was hilarious because I couldn't skate and I wasn't tough. So it actually brought shame to that great man's name. <laughs> <laughs> Um, anyway, you look cute. Thank you. So do you. We had fun last night. We went trick or treating. It was oh, the first time, so first time my son went trick or treating. It's so funny. The, oh my god! The first time you bring your kid out, they're always super shy uh-huh. for like two houses, and then they figure it out like, wait a minute, I just go up there and say Happy Halloween, and they give me candy. I feel like none of them say trick or treat. I heard a few kids saying happy Halloween, which of course is totally fine. Yeah. But I don't feel like people say trick or treat anymore. You know what I love? I just love like like this generation and LA names for kids. You know, yeah. I was joking about that. It's like Brooklyn! <laughs> Brooklyn, you have to wait for stanza. Stanza. Oh hi, soliloquy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like those are not names. Are you Oh my gosh, she's so yeah. cute. But the, kid, the kids, and then there's always those fucking kids that are just way too old to be trick or treating. There was like kids, these teenage kids, they were taller than I was. Their voices had dropped. And they're like, trick or treat, coming up. Remember, there. like at our old place, I was incensed because these teenage, like they weren't even wearing costumes. Maybe one girl was wearing cat ears and they just showed up at the door and they don't say happy Halloween. They don't say trick or treat. They're just like expecting candy. And, I'm and like, then they have this shitty grin yeah, on their I'm face. Like, like, like we don't know what they're doing. Candy. Yeah. It's like, I also, you'd have enough money in your pocket to go to the fucking grocery store and get some candy. Get the fuck out of here. Like these are for the kids. The only, the but only, you never said that. No, I gave it because what am I going to do? I like kind of like got freaked out. I'm like, okay, are they going to like egg the house or do something crazy? I'm like, here, take the fucking, the Milky Way. Kids don't egg can... houses anymore. They go know. on Instagram and make up stories about you. Oh, okay. Even worse. I was like, no, take the Milky Ways. Nobody wants these anyway. They Get would film your house and be like, okay, just to give you the yeah, heads up. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, went yeah. there. I was nice. I said trick or treat. Like they're like a reporter, like at a, you know, live from the, <laughs> like Channel 7 News. Yeah, giving you the fucking, I'm, I'm here. Brooklyn soliloquy live out in front of this house that didn't give don't me a forget, full size don't Hershey bar. Stanza. Don't forget Stanza. Stanza. Stanza's in there too. Right. I didn't Tony hear, Stanza. I did hear Brooklyn. You did? Yeah, that's not Brooklyn's a cool name. Yeah, I love, I love that. Okay. Well, we've we've established Stanza that. Stanza and soliloquy. Those are like those are like music. Are you in like your music head right now that you said stanza and soliloquy? I actually thought that that had to do with writing. <laughs> oh, a soliloquy? It does. Right? I don't know. Oh God. Wait, all right, guys. This should, that that that, that little now. back and forth <laughs> should have inspired all of you <laughs> that we actually have jobs and get paid to do things. Well, that was that was that was even too dumb for me, and I was involved. Um, anyway, uh, what did I want to talk about here? Yeah, so last night, yeah, my son was like really like shy. I almost had to like carry him up to walk on the first one, and then by like the third house, he would do this. He go, "Happy Halloween!" He would like yell it down the thing, and he was dressed like Luigi. He was so friggin' cute. And I found out that he, he's all about, he likes the lollipops. Like he he'd yeah. be, he was totally into that. And then also I would be going like, buddy, just take one, just take one. And he had his like Luigi gloves that didn't fit. You know what I mean? They're like three sizes too big. And yeah. he, he would just go in and just, just like, just grab. You know, what, you know 
what I realized? We're going to have to, before they get home, we're going to have to hide that candy because he's going to go in. She knows how to regulate, but he'll be like all over and he'll start crying. It'll be a whole thing. Oh, so, so in other words, she's wired like you and he's wired like me. Yeah, there yeah. you go. I mean, all right, well, keep him away from the more, bourbon. In more ways than one, yes. For sure. Okay. Faux show. All right, well, listen, to, speaking of faux show, oh. um, I have a bunch of dates coming up. This... Uh, oh. This Saturday night, <laughs> myself in Club Soda Kenny. This Saturday night, s- Saturday. In the park. Saturday. In, in the, the park. park. Think it was the 4th of July. July. People walking, people talking. A man, man selling ice cream. cream. <laughs> something, something. Chicago, man. Oh. Formerly Chicago Transit Authority. And, uh, they named themselves after the, the subway? That's that was like a thing. Manhattan Transfer it was just like... Oh, my God. My dad used to listen to them. I love the Manhattan Transfer. They're so corny, but so good. Those harmonies? What was it? Do the hustle. Bam, 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 bam. Are they the ones who sang that? No, they sang... I don't know what they sang. Does Andrew put music at the end of the Thursday one? Yes. Andrew, can you find some Manhattan transfer and play at the end of this? To transfer from this episode <laughs> yeah, yeah, to yeah. an older one. I yeah. like that. Um, this Saturday night, I'm going to be at the bar to TD Bank North Boston Garden, home of your 8 and one Boston Bruins. Won an OT the other night. Sniper. Um, uh, doing the Comics Come Home. I think the 37th. Comics, come home. Come home you D- guys. Don't be like that. Come home. It's going to be okay. We can talk about this. We can work it out. You've been away long enough. Come home. Come home. Um, that's going to be. Uh, Who else is going to be on the card that night? Oh, God. Rachel Feinstein. Mm-hmm. Mark Marin. Who else? Mm-hmm. I've only posted it nine million times. Bobby Kelly. Bobby! Bobby! Um. <laughs> Is Rachel from Boston? No, I think she's from New York. Oh, okay. I don't know. I just I met she's her in New York. Home. She's, <laughs> she's not coming home. She's leaving home. She's leaving home. <laughs> well, initially it was mainly Boston comedians. They come home. All right, and now it's just anybody. Right. Anybody come on over. Come on over. Yeah, it sounds jokes. it sounds good. It does. It does. It sounds very inviting. Uh, then I'm at Foxwoods the next night. Two Ooh, shows. I haven't been to Foxwoods in ages. Yeah. That was always a fun time. You used to go to Foxwoods? I went to Foxwoods with my mother, my mother, to see Joe, the R&B singer. And my mom had oh, two... Oh, is that the guy? If you're cheating on me, I don't want to know. That guy? Uh, he's the one saying, I want to know, I want to know. I know what turns you on. So my mom had two margaritas and it was... Women a love that song. Complete disaster. And it was so funny. It was so much fun. Oh, and your we, mom got trashed? She did. I mean, it doesn't take much. She's like, you know, a really lightweight. But we went with my, my aunt who passed away, sadly, um, a couple years ago. And it was it was probably one of my favorite memories of all of us together so i haven't been to foxwoods probably since then and that was ages she ago. got your mother hammered i got her hammered on margaritas <laughs> and we hit the slots machine the slots after that. the only time i ever went to foxwoods when i wasn't working is i went with a degenerate gambler comedian you just You've talked about this before, right? Like, you can't just say gambler. You have to say a degenerate gambler. Degenerate. Because he didn't go there to gamble. This guy was a degenerate. Yeah, he went there to what? Stay up the whole friggin' yeah, night yeah. playing cards. And, like, I was opening for him, so I went with him, and we stayed up until 4 or 5 in the friggin' morning, and I was just sitting there. Terrible. I remember him just laughing at me, nodding off as, I was, as, I was, as he was driving home. And you were just trying to hang? I thought I needed to do that. I was like, well, this guy's headline and I got to do it. I should have been like, dude, I'm not fucking doing that. Yeah. I was going to say, there's no way in hell you would ever do that today. No, well. You're like a do the show and go home guy. That's, that's it. Yeah. But yeah. back then I was, uh, I, was, I was a people pleaser. Oh, yeah. You were hanging. You were hanging. I was out. hanging. You Let me out, sit a little closer streets. to you. I was out in these streets, Nia, just pleasing everybody, but except for myself. Um, Where did you get one of 
those little microphones to put on your phone? That's I went cool. to the microphone store. I like it. It's called uh, Mikey's Mics, right down the street. <laughs> Mikey Michelson's mics. That's right, Mikey Michelson. If you need a microphone, if, you, if your voice isn't loud enough, I can amplify it. Come on down to Mikey's Mics. I mean, your voice is definitely loud enough. All right. How did that feel? <laughs> it felt good. It felt good? Shut up. You love me, and I've been a sweetheart to you. Come on. <laughs> I Come love on. You. You're the best. That's right. That's right. There you go. See, I got to squeeze the compliment out. <laughs> but eventually it comes. Okay, so after that, I have a day off. Then I go to Norfolk, Virginia. Mm-hmm. They're coming off a big victory f- of, of, over the Miami Hurricanes. I don't need to tell you that, Nia. Who is? Um, University of Virginia. Oh, I was going to say, they have a sports, like a professional sports team. This is college. Yes, college. Okay. Look at you knowing that they don't have. I mean, I think I would think that they were probably DC fans. I mean, I know a few things. I, I mean, know, I know a few things. I know like the Dakotas don't have any fucking sports team, right? Professional. Yeah, no, right. they don't. But they crush it in hockey. They do. They crush it. In, yeah, they they do. They do, and they win like the NCAA. It's always like them, Maine. And there's somebody else that's so BU gets in there too. Um, yeah, I don't know. All right, so then after that, I go to Atlanta. Nia's old stomping grounds. Mm -hmm. And then I go to Hollywood, Florida, because I'm a big phony. Right? (laughs) Even when I go to Florida, I'm still Hollywood. You know what I mean? Do I go to Daytona where all the real fucking people are? (laughs) Last time I went to Daytona, I went to the 500 with Nate Bargatze. Shout out to him, crushing it on SNL. Oh, great. Yeah, killed it on SNL. Mm -hmm. I always like uh, love seeing comics that I'm huge fans of. Being on the show, and my favorite thing is like, in the end, saying good night is like I can't even tell you what a, like a relief that is. It's just so much f- friggin' pressure, and you just so like, oh my god, I did it! And they start playing that song and that clap, 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 clap as you're coming up. And you're like, holy shit! Oh yeah, where they're playing the piano, yeah. Oh my god, it's and just then the saxophone comes in. Yeah, and, and you're like, oh my, god, it was fun. That's I what did we it. Need it. To go, you need to go viral again for another, you know. Hot monologue. Ooh, what's he gonna say this time? That <laughs> Billy Burr, he's so unpredictable. He's mean. He says it like it is. He's married. I don't like that anymore. Go fucking cry in your bowl of soup by yourself, you fucking losers. Sorry. All right. Yeah, I know. <laughs> by the way, all of these, yeah, these, I don't know. Yeah, you gotta stop reading comments. I know. It's I know. never gonna be good. I know. It's never, it's, you just gotta do whatever the overall is. Yeah. If overall it's positive, it's I'm fine. I'm working on. I know. And it, yeah. it, it is. These it's people that say negative so shit, it has nothing to do with you. It has to do with the fact that their, their life isn't going the way they want it. It's sad. I'm going to get better at it's it. It's sad. You know, I know the negative ones, they, it, it takes a lot to get me going. Because I always look at it like, well, you know, I'm a bald ginger. I can see why. I, I'd come at me too. No. You know what I mean? Don't oh, do yeah. that though. Oh, don't, yeah. don't make it oh, yeah. like okay for the bullies to bully you. They're not bullies, Nia. They're pussies. Right, well, that's definitely true. But I'm saying, Listen, like, for you to if you're be talking like, well, shit, you know, I am a bald if ginger. If, it's like, what does that have to do with If you're anything? talking shit and it involves typing, <laughs> <laughs> let's not act like we're going to a weigh-in and you're getting in somebody's grill. You're sitting there with a little keyboard. You know what else? Yeah, you're white. Yeah, they're just using their little thummy thumbs. Yeah, little their, thummy thumbs. On their, on their phone. Oh, yeah. They, got little, they have little boxing gloves on them, too, when they said mean tweets. <laughs> Um, just so you know that they're telling it like it is. Um, so, Nia, there's an election coming up next year. I can't mm-hmm. tell you how fucking upset I am by that. Why? Because I, oh my God, the fucking dragging it out. The, the dumpster du- fire that we'll have to deal with in well, the news cycle? Oh, Jesus. Can you imagine Joe Biden in a debate? <laughs> How's he even going to do it? <laughs> I hope he pulls it together. I I I just I'm just hope I want somebody in their forties that can like make a speech because because the bottom line is they're still going to work for the same people they're still going to be selling wars mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know they're still going to back the banks and the Ponzi scheme it doesn't really fucking matter but it would be nice to have a good hostess you know <laughs> welcome to Applebee's <laughs> I'll be speaking for you for the next four years. Someone that still has a light in their eye. Sure, sure. I mean, the last two people, Nia. I mean, gee, it's just like, it's like a talent contest. You know, it's like karaoke. I feel like the last two presidents have been like, like presidential karaoke. Would you ever do karaoke? And if you did, what song would you sing? 
Uh, I would do karaoke, and I would sing Let Me Put My Love Into You, Babe by ACDC. I knew it was going to be an ACDC song. Is yeah. that a real name of it? Let Me Put My Love Into You? It's a great you? driving song, and if oh, you don't Jesus. listen to the lyrics, you don't notice that it's a little, uh, a little aggressive. I, I, let Me Put My Love Into You? I think so. Well, that's all right. He just wants to fuck you. I mean, there's nothing wrong with saying you want to put your love into somebody. I don't ever say that to hey, me. Hey, Nia, guess what I want to do later on today? <laughs> Please don't. I don't want you. I don't want it. <laughs> Please keep it. Why are you afraid of love? Oh, God. <laughs> See that? You have intimacy issues Creepy. and you're putting... Creepy. Hey, sweetheart, let me put my love into you, babe. You know what? I'm actually really hungry. Are Let we, me put almost, my love on the line. Are we almost done with this podcast? Well, I'm sorry. Are we keeping you for I your want, busy day? <laughs> just, I want to order some food. <laughs> I want to hang out with you is what I want to do, but I could fucking work today. Well, you had that. Yeah, you had that opportunity to do so. And I told you what you needed to do to do that. And you didn't want to do it. So yeah, because I have work to do because you married a fucking beast. Oh, boy. Huh? <laughs> Here it is. I can't talk a little shit. Yeah, you can talk. I had a good. No, we had a good it. couple of weeks. No, you All right. Definitely earn it. No promo on uh, any sort no... of projects. No. Hey. And yet. Listen. Guess who knew about it? <laughs> guess who knew about that project? Who? Oh, Zip. Recruiter. Recruiter. Yeah. You know, it takes a team of people to make this show successful, does it? <laughs> It's just me and you Andrew. Your underwear? <laughs> <laughs> it's generic copy. Just go with it. Okay. Uh, just like it takes a solid team to make any business successful. Um, so if you're hiring, how do you find the best people for your team? Zip Recruiter. And right now you can try old Zip Recruiter uh, for free. I, I read that wrong. And right now, you can try it for free at Happy Zip. Stroke. I'm starting it up. Screw it up. Dot com slash burr. The next one is going to be the devil read, where it goes backwards, like the old school, like white heavy metal. Did you miss that whole thing? You missed that whole part of music, didn't you? That's not mine. Uh, here's why you'll be grateful when you try ZZF. If you play that for, if you, if you, if you play that forward, it says Zip Recruiter. For your hiring. Matching technology, Zip, ah, uses smart technology to scan thousands of resumes to find the most qualified people for your job. Well, Nia, they say the name of that com company 50 fucking times in this. Great match notifications for Zip Recruiter. Um, I used to work with a guy like that who over-enunciated all the time. He's like, hello, my name is Brian. Uh, Zip Recruiter lets you... This is how we would read this. Brian? Zip Recruiter lets the most qualified people for your job know they are at a great match for it and encourages them to apply. Uh, invite to apply. You can use this Zip Recruiter feature to easily send a personal invite to apply to top candidates so they're more likely to apply. All right. Uh, see why so many business owners... And hiring managers are thankful for ZipRecruiter. Four to five employees who post on ZipRecruiter can get a quality candidate within the first day. I'd be super grateful if you could go to this exclusive website right now to try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash Burr. Again, that's Zip. <laughs> that was a sneeze read. Dot com slash Burr. Spell out Burr. B-U-R-R. ZipRecruiter. Smartest way to hire. Don't you like that? That's old school salesmanship. Wow, that I love that. Was, that was a great read. Puts a smile on my face. It's really oh. A lot of twists and turns and ups and downs. And here's the one that's been here forever, everybody. It's stamps.com. Oh. They've been here. They've been rag rocking with you from the beginning. That's right. From the beginning. All the way back. All the way back to like, uh, I would say like uh, maybe 2011 ish. Yeah. Stamps.com. Yeah. Hey, Nia, did you forget to add stamps.com to your holiday wish list last year? Damn it. I'm telling you, wait, we all make mistakes. Oh, That's what in the, I do about it? Well, Stamps.com has been helping businesses like yours. You have a business? Like <laughs> yours, save time Keeping and money. You in line. <laughs> 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 Not possible. And money during the holiday rush for 25 years with easy access to USPS and UPS services and premium rates for all your postage needs. The holidays are hard enough, Nia. Uh, make sure, make things easier than ever with Stamps.com. If you need a package pickup, you can easily schedule it through your Stamps.com dashboard. And if you sell products online, Stamps.com seamlessly 
no panty lines here, Nia. Seamlessly <laughs> connects with every major marketplace oh and shopping cart. So, so Premium funny. discounts and supplies at your fingertips. Running low, order shipping and mailing supplies, labels, and even printers from the supply store. Get huge career carrier discounts up to 84% off USPS and UPS rates to help your bottom line. Plus, Stamps.com automatically tells your cheapest tells you your cheapest and fastest shipping options. Get access to USPS and UPS services right to your... We already did this. Sign up at the promo code BURR. For a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale, no long-term contracts, commitments, um, commitments or contracts. Sorry, just go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and enter code BURR, B-U-R-R. And that is it, everybody. That is a Thursday afternoon just before Friday, Monday morning podcast. I hope you're watching the World Series, or the World Serious, as Bugs Bunny used to say. All three games have been fantastic. There's a lot of drama. You know, the Rangers came back, and that guy that hit the walk-off home run, I'm not good with the names, he ended up, I don't know if it was an oblique, I don't know if he messed up his back, but everybody's wondering what's going on. They got Captain America playing shortstop. I'm rooting for the Rangers simply because they've never won before, but if the Diamondbacks win, it's an amazing run because they were a wild card team, and they knocked off the Braves. And it's reminding me, Nia, of when the New York Giants with Eli knocked off my undefeated Patriots. They were, they, were, they were on the road as a wild card team, one of the great runs of all time. And as much as it crushed my soul when they lost, it was an amazing thing to watch in sports. And Nia, that's one to grow on. This has been the Thursday. <laughs> Enjoy the music. Enjoy a little Manhattan transfer. You know what I always forget to do? I always forget to put it on airplane mode. And right at the end, somebody ends up calling me. Um... Look, enjoy Manhattan transfer. All right. Nia's request and uh, edited into this wonderful podcast. I like to think it's wonderful by the great Andrew Themelis. And then we have a bonus episode of the Thursday afternoon, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast coming up after this. Uh, a lot of crazy stuff going on in the world. Doesn't mean you can't be a nice person. All right. Just to give you something to think about. All right. Thank you. Bye bye. Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's time for the Monday Morning Podcast for Monday, Monday, November 2nd, 2015. Oh, my God, it's November. You know, the greatest holiday of the year for me is what, Thanksgiving? I like it. It's family. You get to eat. What about Flag Day? That's a good one, isn't it? Why don't you go underground? Support that indie band, right? You could do that. Labor Day is another good one. Uh, Blueberry Pancake Day or whatever the fuck it was that time when I was in Atlanta. I ever tell you guys that story? I went in to do morning TV, the worst fucking thing a comedian can ever do. It doesn't sell one fucking ticket. You know who watches morning TV? Fucking uh, stay-at-home moms. You know? You know those in, in the in the those awful stay at home moms. A cool stay at home mom probably pops in a good movie or some shit like that. But those you know those ones that talk to kids like they're fucking morons, and they do it like you know it's bad enough when the kid's really little, but when they're like six years old and they're still going like, oh, how was your day today? They do that fucking up and down talking with like their eyes really fucking open, eyebrows way up. <laughs> You just want to fucking slap him in the back of the head. Like, what are you doing? And do me a favor. Don't talk to my dog like that because you're going to freak her out. and She's going to go for your throat. All she's going to hear is heightened excitement. And she's going to be thinking someone's going to beat the shit out of her again. Like whoever, whatever, whoever the fuck did it to her before I got her. Isn't that right, Cleo? Huh? She's over there already sleeping. This fucking dog slept for eight goddamn hours last night, right? Right next to me, by the way. I hadn't, I hadn't seen her in like two weeks. So I was watching the KC Met game, and I actually fell asleep before the end of it. I was so fucking tired. And then, of course, I wake up afterwards, and I see KC celebrating. By the way, congratulations to Kansas City. My condolence to Mets fans. Uh, just two fucking great teams. And it was so great to see, you know, not to see Yankees, Red Sox, Cardinals, Giants, the fucking people who were, have been in it. It's nice to see new blood. Um, so anyways, I'm sitting there, and I'm trying to fucking 
see the highlight and I'm just sitting there and my dog, like this, my dog is a master like cuddler. The thing is all the way, like legs tucked underneath and it's fucking got its, its head right on my chest, right? With its muzzle, almost like, just like staring at me and it's snoring. So I don't want to wake the thing up and I'm sitting there and the remote's on the other side of my fucking dog. And I'm like, I, I can't wake this thing up. And I'm sitting there waiting for a fucking highlight. And they got this guy who's just standing there going on and, on and on and on and on and on and on and on about the fucking game. About what happened and blah, blah, blah. It's like, show a fucking highlight, you jerk off. What are you, the president? You giving some fucking State of the Union thing? So many of fucking ESPN shows now are just two fucking people sitting there, standing there, walking around. Talking, talking, talking. That fucking channel, I want to see highlights. Show them all fucking day long. I was sit, I used to watch Sports Center back when I had the time. I'd watch it like three times in a fucking row. I didn't give a shit. Same jokes, same fucking clips, all of that. I loved it. These fucking idiots sitting there talking and talking and talking. I, wouldn't, I should talk, right? I do a fucking podcast by myself. Um, so then I turn the fucking channel. I'm like, all right, they got like 52 ESPNs. I go up to ESPN two. There's two other jerk offs sitting there talking, 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 and they're showing the scores and all of this type of shit. And for the life of me, I haven't seen it. I heard what happened. I heard they let that, they let the pitcher stay in and then he walked the fucking guy. And then there was a double blah, 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 blah. And then there was a play at third and the fucking guy, you know, they looked at each other and then right throws the ball and the guy fucking takes off. It's a close play at the plate. The throw is a little off. I've yet to see it. I just want to see a highlight. <laughs> um, so anyway, so I don't really know. Uh, I don't know what happened. All of that that I know is because actually not because of ESPN. It's because I talked to Paul Verzi this morning, um, who, by the way, is really excited that the Mets lost. I found during this series that he fucking, he hates the Mets. He hates the Mets fans. Don't let him say anything differently. Don't let him try to be a class act. I'm telling you. The, the, the running joke on the tour was uh, Paul Verzi wants no joy in Queens. Because <laughs> we were all sitting there like, I'm a fucking, you know, Red Sox fan. I shouldn't like any team from New York. But I don't give a fuck, right? It's the Mets. You know, they haven't won it since 86. Fuck it. I don't care if they win it. Um, so I want, I wanted to see, I basically, I wanted to see a seven game series is what I wanted to see. And, uh, but Verzi was very silently rooting very hard against the Mets and he wouldn't admit it. And he just, no, 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 I, I don't, I don't care. You know, I, I just want, I just want to see a good series. And then he would get, he would get just a little too excited when KC would be coming back. So, um, anyways, I'm just sitting here fucking babbling. Uh, I did miss Halloween this year. Um, it's the first time I have not been at my house during Halloween, um, which I'm actually happy about because I told you where I live, I live in this weird area where it's like if you go a little, if you go to the right, it gets really nice. If you go to the left, there's like a check cashing place like a block away. You know what I mean? And I'm sort of in the middle. So during Halloween, I get everything from little snot nosed rich kids to like what I had like a year ago with this fucking like, I don't know. 37 year old dude showed up. He looked like a fucking homeless Jim Croce. He just fucking showed up, right? Big fucking mustache, Tom Selleck style. And he was just standing there. And I've just opened the door. Oh, I don't know. No. He had some kids with him and they all left. And he had a bag too. And he held the bag out. And I just went, Really? And he just goes, Yes. I go, Really? Or something like that. Seriously? He just goes, Yes. And I just fucking gave it. What was I going to do? I was joking in Chicago. It's like, I got to give it to him. He knows where the fuck I live, right? That's the thing. You can't fuck people over on Halloween. They know where you live. They, they're going to do something. They're going to walk down your fucking thing. They're going to fucking punch your mailbox or pull the little flag off of it. You know? Yank some fucking, I don't know, plant out of the ground. Which I don't give a shit, right? If it's not fucking making me any food, what do I need it for? Well, because they exhale oxygen. Shut up! We get it. So, anyways, um, dude, I, I'm completely shot from that tour. I am so fucking exhausted. Um, and it isn't from the shows. The shows were great. The people were great. The venues were great. 
But um, I fucking drank every single night for fucking two weeks. And um, every night I was like, yeah, I can't do it. I can't do it. And that was the joke. The joke started to become before every show, we would just be going like, all right, man, tonight we're just going home. Going home early. We're just fucking getting eight hours workout, right? Maybe find a spa. We'll take a steam. Have a nice fucking healthy breakfast. Everybody's nodding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then fucking uh, somebody finishes their set and they just got the devil in their eye when they come off. And then they would look at me and I would just start laughing. And the next thing you know, we go out again. So we're in Chicago. My kind of town, Chicago, is a bunch of mustaches. Chicago is actually I didn't see a lot of them. Michigan Avenue with all those shops. 20 Harry Carey restaurants, which was the original. Um, so anyways, we ended up going out one night. Um, I, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to piece this together. This is the drunkest I've been in like fucking 10 years. We went out to this, this, this bar called the Liars Club. And it was like a bar that basically a bunch of bands hung out at. And we fucking get in there. And I don't plan on doing any fucking damage whatsoever, right? A friend of mine lives in town. She's a photographer. She came down to take some pictures, right? She brings her crew of people. We go out and just fucking get into the bar. And I don't know. I don't know what happened. They fucking go, what kind of music do you like? And I said, well, I like it. And the Bart next day, I go, how about ACDC, right? And they just played, like, all the shit you never fucking hear. All the shit you never hear. Everybody always plays You Shook Me All Night. Although somebody did play You Shook Me All Night Long. Uh, they played, like, Kicked in the Teeth, Down Payment Blues, um, Houses on Fire. They played shit off Power Ridge, Flick of the Switch. You know, side to a highway to hell. Dude, and me and Bartnick were going fucking nuts. Like, Verzi was an angel that night. He barely drank. He just said he wanted to go home. He was just sitting there. And, like, at one point, Bartnick, you know, who's, like, the size of, like, fucking Cam Neely, right? He's fucking doing the Angus, you know, Chuck Berry thing going across the bar. People are going fucking nuts. And everybody just kept buying shots. And like an asshole, I just kept doing them. I think I threw down like nine or ten shots while I was drinking whiskey. So I was like chasing whiskey shots with whiskey. And, um, you know, you wouldn't think that you could go out on a dance floor and dance to uh, ACDC. But God damn it, I did it. <laughs> oh, and did I pay for it? I fucking paid for it. And then I, I, you know, by the end of the night, I, I vaguely remember leaving the bar. It might have been the best night of the fucking tour. We had so much fucking fun. Verzi actually said, like, he was sitting there because he wasn't even drinking. He was going like, I actually was enjoying you and Bartnick putting on a clinic on how to have fun in a bar. He was like, dude, you guys were going. I don't even remember this. He goes, you guys were like head banging. He's like, Burr, you're air drumming on the bar. And then next thing you know, me and Bartnick are both out on the dance floor dancing to ACDC. <laughs> With this stupid disco ball going around us. It was like, if it was a movie, it would have been like, uh, Verzi was saying, it would have been like the montage scene of when me and Joe become best friends before like we fucking, uh, <laughs> before something, whatever happens, sends it in. You know what? Do you remember the naked gun? You remember the naked gun when uh, Leslie Nielsen and Priscilla Presley are doing all the shit, running down the beach, coming out of platoon, laughing their asses off? It was basically that. It was that. That's what we did. And the next day, like, I fucking woke up, you know, still in my clothes, in my bed. And, like, I had all these plans. I'm in Chicago. I'm in one of the greatest cities in the country, and I had all these plans of what I was going to do, and I swear to God, like, I couldn't get out of bed. I couldn't get out of bed till like, fucking 3 in the afternoon. I was like, what? I'm a fucking idiot. And then at 5 o'clock, I went down. I went downstairs, and uh, I tried to get something to eat. I was, no, wait, Verzi came up to my room. Verzi came up to my room, and we were just sitting there fucking 
watching TV and he was just laughing at how fucking just beat up I was, you know, and of course he felt great because he was a fucking angel that night. And I, um, we ended up watching something on TV. One of the sickest stories ever. And we're like, dude, this has to be a fucking movie. And, uh, of course in the end they, they, they said that they were going to turn into a movie. It was basically about this guy, right? It was this fucking show about serial killers. So of course we're going to watch it. Right. And I'm sitting there eating a fucking burger, you know, just trying to, you know, grease always fucking offsets the fucking alcohol. It's awful. I'm out of shape again, guys. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, so we're watching this thing about fucking serial killers. And the whole time they're talking about this this drug dealer kid. And we're like, how the fuck does this... And they keep showing this serial killer guy. It's like, does... And they're showing the drug dealer older, you know, and not in jail and all that shit going, what the fuck happened? You know, just the way they put it together, it was riveting. You're like, what the fuck is going on here? So basically what happened was there was this kid, right? He played football. They called him the assassin because every game he ever played, he took somebody out, right? Was it the assassin? Or was that Jack Tatum? Jack Tatum. Now I forget. But it was something like assassin. So he fucking, uh, and just movie star good looks, all right? And he's the star of the football team. And the lady's sitting there interviewing him going, as he's walking around his high school going like, so you were, uh, you were basically a legend here. And he goes, yeah, I was. He wasn't being arrogant. He said, yeah. He goes, they retired my jersey. They had like pictures of me up on the wall and all that, blah, 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 blah. All the women loved him. I mean, this guy was just like, it was, he, he looked like a movie star and his life was a movie. So his big Achilles heel was he, he didn't have money and he wanted to keep up with the rich kids. So he started dealing drugs and he ended up being really good at it. And by the time he was like 20 years old, this fucking guy was making like a million dollars a year, crushing it, right? He's got a fake, you know, wall in his walk-in closet where he's got another room where he's keeping all the money in a safe. He's throwing all these fucking crazy parties. And it almost seemed like this American greed type story as opposed to this serial killer thing. And they keep going back to this serial killer fucking piece of shit who's killing these girls, these teenage girls. So long story short, he's laying in bed one night and he's just thinking, I got to get out of this life. I'm so sick of looking over my shoulder. I can't do this anymore. How am I going to get out of this? But he's addicted to the money. He's addicted to the life and all of that type of stuff. And he hears this rattling on the door. And I'm thinking, oh, fuck, it's the serial killer. And he obviously fought the guy and won. What the fuck happens, right? All of a sudden, the door fucking blasts open. And all these fucking, was it? Is it the ATF that shows up when you get busted as a drug dealer? Was that alcohol, tobacco, firearm? I don't know what the fuck it is. So anyways, they fucking come FDA, Food Drug Administration. The uh, transit, Chicago Transit Authority, I don't know what the fuck it is. Whatever the fuck that thing is, they come fucking blasting through the door. Run up, you know, a bunch of guys with the fucking minor helmets on, with the fucking Uzis from a Steven Seagal movie. Go, get on the ground, if you fucking look at me, I'll blow your fucking head off. And the whole thing was over. And he disgraced his family name. And they never said it, but I imagine they probably took his fucking pictures down off of the high school and all of that type of shit. You know, did some OJ shit, right? Take all his trophies and all that fucking shit. So it's over, right? So then he's sitting in jail. Um, and they try to get him to flip. And this is it's just some fucking kid from the suburbs, right? So I'm thinking, well, he's out. He must have ratted somebody out. So he doesn't rat anybody out. He's like, I'm not telling on anybody. So then they're like, all right, well, fuck you. So now we're, you're not going to help us out. We're going to fucking give you, you know, the full extent of the law. We're going to uh, prosecute you. So they gave him 10 years. The guy gets 10 years. He's in like a minimum security because, you know, he didn't really uh, have any violent past or anything. He was just getting people addicted to drugs. That's all he was doing. <laughs> so his dad is devastated and all that shit. And he, he goes to jail. And uh, meanwhile, this serial killer guy is out there killing these girls. So I'm thinking, what the fuck? And they keep going to commercial. Me and Verzi are looking at each other going, how the fuck are they going to tie this fucking thing together? So long story short, um, 
they ended up catching the serial killer guy. Uh, I forget how we fucked up, but they ended up catching him in one of those things where you seem re- like relieved and all of that type of shit. And, uh, but he had this thing where he wouldn't admit to all of them. And if he came at him, he would just clam up and wouldn't say shit. So he ends up going to jail for like either one or two murders for life. He's never fucking getting out. So meanwhile, there's all these parents whose daughters were killed by this guy and they don't know where they are. And all they just want is the body. They want fucking closure. And these parents are just tortured by this fucking thing. All right. So they're trying to figure out because he won't talk to them. He won't tell them anything. And he's also in denial and he keeps going like, actually, I didn't kill him and blah, 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 blah. And then one day be like, oh, I did. And I blacked out. I don't remember. Like the guy was just a fucking creepy goddamn mess. Right. So they end up coming up with this idea that they need a charismatic person to talk to this, to befriend this serial killer, gain the guy's trust. And maybe he'll tell him where like the bodies are and that type of shit. So they go to this fucking dude, Captain America. You know, the football player, the movie star looking guy who fucked his whole life up because he got involved in drugs. Right. And they approach him to go from his minimum security to go into a maximum security prison with his murderers, rapists, animals, fucking maniacs. Right. And, um, you know, to go in there and they said, if you get, if you get this information out, we'll take your sentence and we'll just wipe out the rest of it. We'll set you free. He'd already done like three, four years. So meanwhile, Captain America's dad had a series of strokes, you know, and was basically going to die. And he had to go see him. I mean, it's like a fucking movie. So he goes, all right, fuck it. I'll, I'll do it. But I want it in writing that you're definitely going to let me go. So they say, yeah. So they go, all right. He goes, Here, they go, here's the deal. <clears throat> we don't want you to approach him for at least six months. Because he's very cagey. And if you fucking, you know. Come at the guy the wrong way. He just fucking walls himself off and that's it. All right. So this kid comes, he goes in, he goes, fine, cool. And he walks in there. He's like, I don't have six months. My dad's going to die within the first two months Two, I'm sorry, first two hours. He goes into the fucking jail and he fucking, uh, on purpose, accidentally bumps into the guy. And then he immediately apologizes. He goes, I'm sorry about that, buddy. I didn't see you standing there. Hey, he goes, I'm new here. Do you know where the library is? And the guy tells him where the library is, and he goes, thanks, man. Uh, you know, and he said something to the effect of, uh, yeah, you're a good guy. And gives him a little slap on the shoulder. That's it. And goes to the fucking library. And they set it up where his fucking, his cell was right across the hall from the other guy. And he says to him, he goes, hey, man. He, he runs into him again. Hey, where are you staying? Blah, blah. He goes, oh, that's crazy, man. You want him right across. And he says, oh, it's good to be with a good guy like you. Blah, blah, blah. Right across from each other. And... He goes, uh, so then fucking the serial killer guy one day goes, hey, you want to get lunch with me and my friends? And at this point, me and Verzi, we're fucking laughing our balls off going like this kind of social shit happens in prison. OK, uh, some friends of mine, uh, gonna have some other uh, murderers and serial killers. We're going to get some uh, maybe get some, uh, you know, a, a frapping uh, a fucking rap or something. You want to come down? Just kind of hang out. <laughs> I'll meet you down in the commissary, right? You always think it's all just getting shanked and trying not to get raped, right? So he goes, yeah, cool. So long story, he gains this guy's fucking confidence. And one time he actually goes in and he sees the guy. He's got a map with all these red dots on it and all that shit. He's trying to get to it and blah, blah, blah. So the guy starts opening up and he finally ends up telling him this fucking stories um, of all the women that he killed and all of that shit. And, uh, And sort of kind of mentioned, he gave him like sort of, enough information about where the bodies were and the captain america guy kind of fucked up because once he got the information he thought he had enough information to find all the bodies and get himself out of prison and he just couldn't oh wait i forgot the best part i'm sorry it's gonna be like a tarantino movie now we're gonna jump backwards another way he gained the guy's confidence was one day they were sitting in the tv room watching tv He's sitting next to this guy and this big fucking giant dude just gets up and turns the channel without talking to anybody. And as he turns the channel, the serial killer, who was like a meek little guy, and he just kind of went, he just sort of said out loud to nobody. He was like, hey, I was watching that like powerlessly, really fucking weird psycho thing. And the fucking Captain America dude walked up to the big dude and knocked him out. 
Just beat the guy's ass, hit him with an uppercut, fucking forearm, shiver him, just sent this guy flying through some chairs. And then they stuck him in the hole. That's what happened. And then when he fucking comes out, tell me this doesn't sound like a fuck. I almost don't even believe it. So that's when he gained the guy's confidence. That's when the dude told him. And the second he tells him, this dude, Captain America, couldn't hold it in anymore. And he goes, dude, you know what? You're a sick fucking piece of shit, blah, 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 and flipped out on him. And then the guy, the serial killer just backed up and he goes, he goes, who sent you? And he goes, so-and-so sent you, right? And he named the prosecutor. And then he just fucking disappeared. And the map disappeared, too. So then it's like they didn't get the map. So there was a thing. We don't know where the fucking bodies still are, blah, 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 blah. But you got him to admit to these fucking murders. So we know that the women are at least dead, blah, blah. He, basically, in the end, he did enough where he got out. Um, and the whole time we were watching this fucking thing, we were just going like, this is, a, this is a fucking movie. Now, I guarantee you when they do the fucking movie, they don't even need to add any mustard to it. But I guarantee you in the movie, he won't flip out in the end. You know, or if he flips out, but then he somehow, and then that'll be the last little like hiccup, like, oh no, they didn't find the map. In the movie, he'll find the map, and then the parents will actually get closure. But in real life, you know, it's not a fucking movie, and it sucks. But isn't that unbelievable? That, that's like a, it's so fucking nuts. Like at one point, they were visiting his old house, and he showed, he goes, yeah, I used to live here. I used to live here, I had all these cars, I threw like a fucking 20 kegger here one night, and he goes up into the room and he shows the secret place where his safe is um and, and you know those fort knox fucking things it's just i don't know man it was fucking uh an incredible story whatever whatever i know half of them fucking glorifying goddamn drug dealer right isn't that what i'm doing um and in the end i know you guys wanted a happy ending there wasn't a happy ending because he fucking he kind of screwed it up in the end but they still let him go though which is sort of odd right you know, this is weird and uncomfortable to watch at this point. You know, all these videos they show where there's cops beating up uh, black dudes and all that type of stuff. You know, what's really weird is to watch white kids fucking with cops. Like I saw one kid was doing this thing where he was drinking a beer where you weren't supposed to drink a beer. He did like a magic trick. And the cop goes, you can't drink here. And he keeps fucking drink, keeps drinking. Then he ends up putting it in the bag and then the, the fucking bottle disappears. He was like a magician. And it's just like, you know, that made me miss the Chappelle show. Because he would have done a sketch about that and then would have showed the black guy trying to do the same thing where he would get like a third into the trick and the fucking bottle would be smashed over his head. Um, I don't know. And I usually don't go for that whole fucking, you know, if this person does this, but if that person does that, I mean, after seeing some of those videos, and I'm not saying all cops are bad, you know, it's like comedians, you know, that we're not all hacks. We don't all have lampshades on our heads. We're not all on off stage and have to be the center of attention. However, when people think that about it, I don't about comics. I don't sit there scratching my head, head wondering where that stereotype came from. You know what I mean? That's my only thing with groups of people is like, you know, when you're talking about the stereotypes of people, it would really help someone who's not in your stereotype. If you if you at least acknowledged where it came from, like me, German, German, Irish. So I get Nazi alcoholic uh fucking lunatic right whatever whatever all of it is potato eating jackass um mass murder and psycho now do i like hearing that shit i mean i, I guess i don't give a fuck but you know I, you know I, it's easy for me to say i don't give a fuck because it doesn't affect my life i don't walk into a job interview and they go look at this fucking nazi redheaded cunt we're not hiring you i guess then that would bug me more all right you know what fuck that whole point Fuck that whole point. I guess I need to listen to people. But just some point. You know what I mean? It was like after like 9-11 when they were doing like the at the airport where they were like anybody even remotely looked Middle, Middle Eastern. They were just fucking, you know, giving them the fucking, uh, they're giving them the business. And then people were getting mad. And it's just like, are you even remotely going to address what the fuck happened? You're going to act like you don't know where this is coming from? 3,000 people just fucking died. That was a joke I was doing in my act. I was like, you know what? If fucking 18 redheads flew two fucking built, uh, planes into the World Trade Center and knocked them down, and I went to the airport, yeah, I wouldn't like being frisked every time, but I wouldn't be sitting there going, like, oh, where is this coming from? I know where it's coming from. And at some level, as much as it would be fucking annoying me that those airport cunts were treating me like that just because of the way that I looked, at some point I would address the 18 redheads that fucked it up for me. 
fucked it up for me, right? Does that make any sense? Probably doesn't. All right, let's do some reads for this week, everybody. All right, let's get back to the... Oh, why did you conk out on me? Why did the internet conk out on me? How dare you? How dare you? Um, and now this won't move. Why won't you move? I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. This is how you drag something. All right. What do I want to talk about? Okay, oh, the Bruins. Here we go, Bruins. Here we go. Bump, bump. 6 0 and 1. They're 6 0 and 1. Basically, you know what happened? Not only did they start to get to know each other as players, I stopped watching them. And ever since I haven't been watching, they've been winning. Um, we've gone 6 0 and 1. The only blemish is when we played the Philadelphia Flyers. Yep, they came back and fucking tied it up, and then they uh, Claude Giroux won it in fucking overtime. But other than that, 6-0-1. Would you look at that? And old Don Sweeney, who I was, I said at the beginning of the year, I'm like, this guy, the moves this fucking guy made, all right? This guy is either going to be the next Bill Belichick or he's going to be fucking run out of town because this guy went all in. Um I, I, it's just every fucking thing seems to be falling in place. I know it's really early. It would be ridiculous for me to get overly excited about this because when they were over 0-3, oh, I didn't freak out. You know, I was like, they look looking competitive. They just keep fucking up a little bit about halfway through the game. Then it became the third period. Now they're kind of nailing it down. So hopefully this is what they're going to be doing. Um, but now, you know, maybe he's more like the Theo Epstein. I have no idea. All I know is that we're competitive, and I was sitting there looking like we're, we're, we will, are, we're going to lose to the fucking Canadians every game again this year. And uh, all of a sudden now, you know, who knows? Who knows? We'll see what happens, right? Lucic got his first goal for the fucking Kings. <laughs> Still bugs me to see him in that uniform. Um, but we got, uh, we got the Dallas Stars tomorrow night. Dallas Stars, Jamie Benn, Tyler Sagan, Patrick Schapp. Dude, how many fucking like former Bruins and certainly Blackhawks are playing on number one lines around the fucking league? Look at, look at fucking Winnipeg with Blake Wheeler. Right? Blake Wheeler up there in Winnipeg. We got Tyler Sagan in fucking uh, Dallas. I guess Lucic isn't playing on the number one line, is he? No, I don't think he is. But you know what? That's the greatest thing about going to Daily Faceoff, my favorite fucking website now. You know? And they don't they don't pay me to advertise. For the love of fucking Christ, Bill, can you learn how to drag a goddamn window here? All right. And they also have I didn't realize that fucking Dallas also has Jason Spencer from fucking Ottawa is their second line center. Who knew who knew that? I didn't know that. Did you know that? Hey, what fucking team was I just talking about? Do you remember? Oh, the Kings. The Los Angeles Kings. The L.A. Cunts. Where the fuck are they? Here we go. Line combinations. He is. He's first line, left wing. With Jeff Carter and Tyler Toffoli. Oh, they broke up that 70s line. Who would have thought? They got Kopitar as the center on the second one. Right now, you're like, Jesus, Bill, how much hockey are you watching? I'm not. I'm not. I go. To, I just go to Daily Face Off, and you look. You click on line combinations, and you can do it. Jesus, how fucking deep are they? Their first line is Lucic, Carter, and Toffoli. Their second line is Pearson, Kopita, and Dustin Brown. Whenever I watch the King, I actually like the Kings. Um, unfucking believable. The only thing that makes me happy about seeing the Kings this loaded is it makes me. It gives me hope that the Canadians will not win a cup again this year, even though they're playing fucking great. Um, but anyways, look at the fucking Bruins. Came right back around. Hung in there. And I got all those games taped, so I got to watch them. And I'm ridiculously excited to watch uh, the Dallas Stars game because uh, they're fucking, they're, you know, they're one of the best teams all of a sudden. I've always been a fan of green and white. Come on, I'm a Celtics fan, right? Um, so anyways, let me, uh, let me plow ahead here. Another great thing that I did while I was out in Chicago is I went to arguably the greatest drum shop in the country, uh, Vic's drum shop. And, um, it is this basically giant, 
it's a combination drum shop and like studio space. And I lost track. I think there's like four floors to it. And it almost looked like what it used to be is, you know, like the, one of those places you just storage space, you know, those things are really weird. Like the way they set them up and there's those narrow hallways and you walk down them. There's all of that type of stuff. So he kept all the rooms and he just sort of combined rooms and put in windows so you could see through. And he has like just this symbol room where he just has like fucking, and he, and he has like total anal. Like he has every fucking hi hat you could think of and he has them in alphabetical order. So I don't know all the drum names, but he starts with like DW and then it ends with Yamaha. Every fucking kind you could possibly ever fucking want. The remote, the remote cabled ones, everyone you can think of. He had this DW double pedal that I had never even fucking seen before. It looked like a piece of jewelry but in glass. He had another area where it was just all, uh, all acoustic drums. Then he had this whole area that was all uh, electronic drums. He had upstairs, he had these two monster fucking kits. Like uh, Terry, Terry Bozio type shit. I went over there with a friend of mine. He let her play on it, let me play on it. It was just, it was fucking insane. It was fucking insane. And, um, and I went into one of his drum rooms. It's nice and clean. The drums were all tuned up. They sounded fucking great. And what killed me is I could have been going down there every fucking day playing drums when I was in Chicago instead of being laid up fucking hammered. I was I got so drunk at the Liars Club. And if you think I'm not going back there again and doing nine shots and dancing to ACDC, it's over. Like I'll tell you right now, Vic's Drum Shop at fucking the Liars Club, I'm, I'm hitting those every time I go to town. Um, although next time I'm going to bring the lovely Nia, you know, uh, Chicago is a, um, that's a, see, I got all kinds of family out there and, you know, one of the big things, all the men on, um, both sides of my family would always take their wives down to Michigan Avenue, buy shoes or whatever, like throughout all of the last century. So, uh, that's something that I have to do at some point. I got to take, I got to take Nia down there and buy her something, but, um, I could not have had a better time. And I have to tell you right now, if you're a fucking drummer, I don't give a fuck where you live. If you're anywhere there in the Midwest, if you're in fucking Des Moines, I don't want to hear you bitching about the fucking, the ride. Like if you're going to make a major purchase, if you're going to go buy a bunch of new symbols and all of that type of shit, I'm telling you, get in your fucking car, drive to Chicago, go to Vicks. And I'm telling you, that guy, he has everything. He had Zildjian, he had Sabian, he had paste, pa- Pasty, Peisty, why we say that, Minel, he had fucking, he had it all. Every fucking hi-hat, just, it was insane. It was fucking, it was actually like, and he was going over, he had a percussion room, and he was, he was going over the whole fucking thing. It, it was like, it was like sensory overload. I almost had to try to be like, he had like a whole fucking, all, all these snares, this whole room was just all snare drums. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of fucking... Sn- the amount of money this guy has invested in just to fuck... Just to be carrying that that amount of inventory. Another cool thing he had, he had a whole tabletop. This giant table, almost like an island that you'd have in like a big kitchen. The, the whole tabletop, the surface was made out of that material that's a practice pad. So like literally like 20 drummers could stand around it and all be just trying out sticks. And that was, of course, in the stick room. I can't even like the whole fucking thing was just it was just from top to bottom was the most insane fucking place I've ever been to. And I was just like, hey, man, I wanted to play. You know, if I wanted how much you charge for studio time, he's like, hey, you know, like 15 bucks for an hour. I can go play in a kit, you know, while I'm on the fucking road. That would have been the greatest thing ever. So that's that's my one regret is that I didn't do that three days in a row and, and get three hours better on drums or who's kidding who. I probably gone there for two. You got, you got to do at least two, right? The first hour is practice and all the shit you suck at. And then the second hour is just playing to all your favorite songs, fantasizing that you're in the band. I don't think that's weird. I think that's normal for me to do, pushing 50 years of age. <laughs> so, anyway, so I got the big Philly gig. The big Philly gig coming up this weekend and uh, Friday night. And um, 
Uh, it's going to be me, Paul Verzi, and Joe Matarese. Joe Matarese, Philly native. And um, we're going to be coming in there. So I've been asking the good people of Philly where I should go to get my fucking cheesesteak. You know? Because tourists, like me, oh, go down to Geno's and the other fucking place, whatever they are. So I've been getting all these ideas from people. And the overwhelming winner... All right. This is like an election. So you're going to know who's winning. And if you guys think I'm making a mistake, you got to send me a tweet. The overwhelming winner. As far as um, not going to those two places is, is John's roast pork in Philly. Now, I know right now everybody in Philly either went like nuts, like, yes. I should say people from Philly listening to this um, either went like psyched that I'm going there. Or then I'm going to get a bunch. Oh, I don't fucking go there. That place sucks. So overrated. I went there and it was fucking dry. So John's roast pork Philly. I mean, that sounds delicious. So I think that that's where I'm going to go. That's where I'm going to go after the show. I'm going to go over there. I'm going to stand in fucking line. As of right now, unless somebody tells me, unless enough people tell me differently, that's where the fuck I'm going. Um... <laughs> That's where the after party's going to be. I'm going to go out and get a fucking cheesesteak. And you know what? I can't fucking wait. I can't fucking wait. That's going to be great. I just fast forward in my life. Um, so anyways, but like I said, I'm going to try to be a good boy here this whole week. I'm going to be working out and doing all that type of shit. I got to get my ass back in shape. I put on probably like seven or eight pounds over two weeks. Maybe not that much weight. It just feels like I did. But you know what? I'm gonna. Uh, I'm in town here for a good four or five days before I have to go back out again, and I'm just gonna eat perfectly and work out. That's what the fuck I'm gonna do. That's what I'm gonna do. And uh, I think just from just literally not drinking at this point, uh, that alone will be enough for me to drop a couple this week. So if I drop a good, you know, three four before I do uh, the Madison Square Garden, well, I should be happy, right? Um. All right. So there you go. So that's the. Uh, Oh, did anybody see that fucking Giants Saints game? Did you see the Giants Saints game? It's one of the most fucking insane games I've ever seen in my life. One quarterback throws for seven, Drew Brees. Eli throws for fucking six. Did you just fucking, you want to see, you know, every time I watch the Giants, there's something that reminds me, not every time, but a lot of times it reminds me of losing Super Bowls to them. That fucking drive that they had, the football gods love Eli. I don't ever want to see that guy again in the playoffs. He fucking comes down the field, right? They're, they're threatened. They're down by, what were they down by? They were down by 14 at that point. It was like 42-28. Nobody had even attempted a fucking field goal at that point, I believe. So, probably hadn't punted either. So, they fucking, uh, whatever. They, they call a pass play. He drops back to pass. Somebody comes right up the middle, fucking drills the guy. He fumbles the ball. Saints recover. There's like 13 minutes left or 12 minutes left. It's not the nail in the coffin, but like if the Saints drive down and fucking score a touchdown or even kick a fucking field goal, they're three scores up with probably nine minutes left. They are ridiculously comfortable at that point. All right? The defense would probably be a little deflated because they sense it too. The Saints would be on their toes. You know, just a game changer, right? Football gods step in. Football gods step in once again. And they called some ticky tack horseshit fucking uh, defensive holding, right, on the Saints, which gives the fucking uh, Giants the ball back and keeps the drive going, gives them like a fucking first down. They get all the way down to the end. They're on the goal line. Eli goes back to pass. Here comes the fucking rush, and he's rolling out. They should have sacked him, but they didn't. He's rolling out, and I know what's going to happen. He's going to throw the ball, and somehow it's going to land in some giant giant's hands. So he throws the ball back across his body, running right, throws it back left with barely anything on it. Classic Brett Favre six-interception game throw. Throws the fucking thing. It's going to be a pick. But the guy on the Saints mistimes his jump, gets hit by another Saint, lands on his fucking head and gets a concussion, and this fucking duck just lands into the hands of a giant for a touchdown. I've never seen a guy. The, the horseshoe 
that is up this guy's fucking ass. I just, I looked at it. I was like, that, that right there. If we play them again, that's how we will lose. We'll lose to him just like that. E- exactly to a fucking T. I don't know what it is. He, ha- that guy has the fucking magic. And there's another thing too. Now that I'm saying this and being a whiny cunt fucking Patriot fan, that guy also made some, some fucking sick ass throws. He's definitely, I'm, I'm, I'm not shitting on the guy. I fucking love him. I think he's the shit. But I've never seen a guy fuck up so many times and, and, and does not pay the price for it. Maybe I need to watch him more. Or maybe I'm still just so fucking rattled from those two fucking, oh my God, when we, when we were undefeated, when he threw, he threw a pick to Asante Samuel, it hit him in both hands. The guy just drops it. Then he throws behind his fucking receiver. The guy reaches back over the Patriot guy's arm and catches it with his hand in his helmet. Fucking, I I mean, just anybody else, that'd be an incomplete pass. You fucked up as a quarterback. Or it would be, it'd be a pick. I'm telling you, I've I've never fucking seen it. It's just, it's insane. I never want to see that guy. If we play the Giants in the Super Bowl this year, I'm telling you right now, I'm not going to watch it. Or I'll watch the first three quarters, and then I'm just walking away, and I'm going to stand outside my party and just waiting for the screams of agony. I know it's going to happen. I'm like, what the fuck? When that happens, I'm just going to fucking, I'm just going to walk away. I'm going to walk away. I'm not going to watch ESPN for like a month. I'm not, I, you know, I might even take a month off from my podcast. I didn't want to fucking see it. I'm telling you, this guy, he sold his soul. Something happened. Isn't that right, Cleo? Come here. Get over here, buddy. Get up on the couch. What do you say there, buddy? Huh? What do you say? Hmm? Want to hear? Listen to this. You never do the fucking moan when I give you the hug. She does this thing. I come up. She give her a hug. She goes. Arr. You stink, buddy. You know that? I'm going to give you a bath. You want a bath? No, there's the look. Why don't dogs like getting baths? You know what I mean? They hate the process, but then afterwards, they fucking freak out. I can't tell if it's because they feel good or they're just psyched that it's over, but it's almost like watching a junkie just keep using rather than just going. If you just go through a little bit of misery, you know, you're going to be all right. Huh? Mwah. All right, let's read some letters. Cleo, you want to chime in on some of these? All right, cross-country lady. Um, hey, maybe I can get Nia up here. She hasn't done the podcast in a minute. Hang on one second. Hold on. Well, no such luck. I thought she was downstairs. Where is she, Cleo? All right, cross-country lady. Uh, Bill, I'm a 25-year-old girl. Um, you're a woman. You're a lady. I'm pretty responsible and competent and don't whine like some broads over there. I'm not one of those girls who can say they know how to change a tire, but I've done enough that I think I could... If I had to. Yeah, you can change a tire. You got to change a tire, but you, nobody can change a fucking tire with the factory jack that they jack handle that they give you. You can't get enough fucking torque unless you're just some fucking, you got those Popeye forearms. What you really need is you just need a little piece of pipe that you can stick over. You know, you loosen the lugs while it's still on the ground. Then as you go to jack it up, you stick your spare underneath the tire, underneath the fucking frame in case it comes crashing down. That's supposed to save you, but the fucking thing's so goddamn small now, it doesn't matter. All right? You take the fucker off. You put the new one on. All right? You put all the fucking lugs on that you put in your pocket or in a place that you didn't, none of them rolled away. And then you lower the car back down, and then you tighten, and you go. It's the easiest fucking thing ever. Right? All right, that's the attitude, right? Uh, On a somewhat related but unrelated note, I'm looking to drive across the country. I'm moving to Los Angeles from Rhode Island. My parents are cool and trust me, but they have their concerns about me driving by myself. Yeah, absolutely. You've, You've seen this great country from all your touring. I suspect early on in your comedy career, there was more driving than flying. Absolutely there was. Uh, do you have any advice or warnings against me doing so? I would take a week or so and pick out some different stops. I drive a 2003 black Volvo station wagon. It's ready to go. So am I. What are your thoughts? Uh, P.S. Thanks for checking in on us on Thursday. It really means a lot. Um, all right. What would my advice be? Uh, my advice. My advice would actually be to maybe do it with somebody else. Just because... Um, Especially depends on where you're staying. You know, 
as a woman going out there by yourself, I would definitely stay at nice hotels, enough underground parking, uh, you know, just really well lit places. Don't do what I did where I fuck. I drove across country in about two and a half days one time. My t- my big square 1990s TV in the back. And I would just pull up to shitty hotels and I would just sleep in the car because I didn't want to drag all my shit out of the car into the thing. So I just slept there like a fucking idiot. Someone just would have broke the window. By the time I figured up, realized what was going on, my throat would have been slit. So I would, I would do it with somebody else. Um, if you're going to go during the winter time, you want to get south as quick as you can. Um, maybe go across the 40. Hey, Nini, you want to come on the podcast? I'm going to eat breakfast. Oh, you eat breakfast? Yes. Can you say hello to everybody? Hi, everybody. All right. <laughs> um, so I would maybe do the 40 as opposed to the 70. Um, the 70 is beautiful when you drive across. Uh, I believe that one, it goes, it'll actually go south of Pittsburgh. But you go through a... Um, like I actually, my favorite part of the seventy is actually when you first pick it up. Is that the fifteen? The fifteen goes up and meets the seventy from the west. Well, Bill, why don't you take a fucking map out? Going through Utah. Um, wait, I got to reread it. You go to Los Angeles, yeah. So if you take the seventy across, going through Utah, going through Vegas, going through the Rocky Mountains is this amazing tunnel that you drive through. Um, as you get out towards Grand Junction and all of that, I will tell you what is a motherfucker is after, uh, I mean, you got to do the thing where you, 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 you go through St. Louis, you know, and you see the arch, that's the shit. Um, and it's cool right until you get to Kansas city, stop in Kansas city, get yourself some barbecue and then just fucking settle in because Kansas is a motherfucker. Um, that's a motherfucker trying to get through that thing. Uh, although, you know, if the Jayhawks have a game, I'd stop. Maybe have, uh, yeah, if you figure out shit that you want to do along the way, you can have a great time. But I got to be honest with you. If you were my sister or my, my daughter or whatever, I would not want you doing it by yourself. Um, but if you are going to do it by yourself, just make sure you stay in safe places. Keep your head on a fucking swivel. And I would also, uh, the second you get tired, pull over. I mean, get to your destination. Don't do the dumb shit that I did where you're almost like hallucinating. I got a buddy of mine, a comedian, told me a story. He's the one who cured me of it. He was fucking driving to the airport, nodding off like early in the morning. And the next thing he rem- he woke up, he was laying in a field. He got thrown from the fucking car and somehow just landed in the field and was okay. And uh, he wasn't wearing a seatbelt, obviously. By the way, did you guys see that kid out here in Los Angeles? This poor kid, like 20 years old, was driving, lost control of his car. The thing was rolling. He got ejected out of the car. And you know those signs on the freeway that the trucks, that 18 wheelers can drive underneath without hitting? He went up, hit that thing, and landed. You know, sometimes they have like a little walkway up there. His body landed up there. Um, so I would say be careful. Definitely be careful. Um where the fuck is all the rest of the questions here for this week? That's what I would say. Oh, look who's here. He decided to show up. Cleo, for the love of fucking Christ, you got to do that every every week. I can't get through the podcast without the thing. You just love unplugging shit, don't you? All right, come in, Yini. Help me with these last few uh, these last few questions. I don't know what just happened to him. I had a bunch of questions, and they all went away. Libraries, content. Oh, I don't even know when that one was from. All right, here we go. Royals. You don't want to talk sports, do you? <laughs> Can you grab another microphone, though? Yeah. Hang on. Let's see here. You can plug it in. Here, can you grab a microphone and I'll plug it in? I think it's somewhere in my bag. Oh, Either that, yeah, we'll probably have to share one. Sorry. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Sorry. Plug it in, plug it in. <laughs> All right, with the magic of the pause button, here we go. All right, <laughs> Nia, we're going to talk sports with you. Oh, goody. The Royals, where are they from? Cincinnati? No. Nope. Wait, wait. Good guess, though. It's one of those cities. One of those big, 
so-called B-level cities. I don't know. Hey, wait, but, wait. Uh, no, no, I don't know. They have great barbecue. Kansas City? Bam. <laughs> Billy Betts, I know you're touring and you didn't get to see much baseball, but I just want to say how much I like Harold Reynolds. You know Harold Reynolds, right? It's a huge mm-hmm. difference having a guy who can explain baseball. I know baseball, but uh, it's the insight you want to hear. This was a great World Series. Uh, don't know what the ratings were, but this was the best baseball I've seen in a while, despite the fact that the Mets were lucky to be there based on their record and slow start to the season. What the fuck does that mean? What do you mean lucky to be there? You don't get lucky getting in the World Series. You won the games you had to win. The Royals played really excited baseball Hits are more fun than home runs any day. Thanks for the podcast. All right, I guess he's just saying he likes Harold Reynolds. That's really not a question. Um, <laughs> no, I was like, you know what was really cool was, of course, you know this, to see George Brett excited like a fan when mm-hmm. he saw him all run out. You know, the great George Brett, last guy who came sure. the closest to hitting 400. Okay. He hit 400 like through August almost. He, he ended up with at 390. Um, all right, Halloween drama. Here we go, Nini. You were home for Halloween. Yes, I was. Uh, Bill... <laughs> You're really bringing it this week. You are really bringing it. You didn't get any breakfast. Yes, I was. Halloween is a date in October. Yes, it is. All right, Bill, I'll cut right to the chase. I was at a Halloween party, and naturally tons of girls were dressed scantily clad. My girlfriend's costume, though, uh, though a bit revealing, was extremely tasteful compared to other broads. So I see this dude taking pictures of girls' asses and just being a creep about it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I look at him as if to say, what the fuck are you doing? He just walked away. A couple minutes later, I see him snapping a picture that was framing my girlfriend's tits. Albeit they were covered and not hanging out, it was a creep, still a creep move. Yeah, So I stepped in front of him and confronted him. Yep. He said, it's a party. Everyone's, everyone takes pictures. A couple people looked at me funny like I was an overprotective douche. What? No. The thing is, I opened my mouth before it even involved my girlfriend. Did I do something wrong? Of course not. Well, no. And that's the thing about it. It's like, I feel like it's women can say over and over again, don't take pictures of me. You know, stop leering at me. Stop being a fucking disgusting perverted creep but it's gonna take guys like you and other guys to say to other guys like that's not cool like stop taking pictures of these girls unless they're like posing for pictures for you right i think i think and take, don't I, take I, pictures I think, of my girlfriend I, don't do that i don't care if it's a party i don't care that happened to me one time i went to some bar club or something and i was dancing with my girlfriends and this dude came and was like trying to video the entire thing of us dancing together and i was like i just stopped and i put my hand in front of his face and i was like don't do that he was like who are you freaking out about ma everyone's just like taking pictures it's cool it's cool i said no it's not cool you're not allowed to take pictures of me stop taking pictures of me and then finally he just kind of like turned away and i'm sure he well when you're in public he actually is allowed but you still just tell him to stop he is allowed he's allowed if you want you're in public you're considered in public and it's it's on you that doesn't but it doesn't make it okay it's the new cell phone era nia and it's it's i don't but there's no rule that says you're allowed to just take but there's no rule saying you can't do we need to talk about sorry i knocked the plug out we're back here here's the thing nia like with the with cell phones now, like all of that type of stuff, you can tell somebody not to do it, but the, they can't be prosecuted or anything for doing it. Once you're out in public, uh, you're considered in public, and people can take pictures of you. Hmm. Like the paparazzi, they just follow famous people around. They take fucking pictures of them and everything. They can't go like into their house or go onto their property. Then they're considered trespassing. But the second you walk out there. Well, here's my question to you. I don't think, obviously, I don't think that someone should fucking take pictures. That's definitely creepy. But as far as the leering thing goes, do you think women have any responsibility as far as if you're going to go out there and, and dress suggestively? Aren't Do they have any responsibility? I think that if you go out and you're dressed in a revealing way, I think, yes, of course, naturally, people are going to look at you. But it doesn't give anybody the right to say nasty things to you or to touch you or to think that they just have. I'm not talking about touching. I'm just saying somebody's staring at you. See, I knew you were going to get mad. No, I'm I knew you were going to get mad. Saying... I'm just saying, like, it's it's like, do you, if you don't want that to happen to you, 
Right? And this, I can wear and, and this, whatever the fuck I want to wear. That's the bottom line. So can you know? I, I can walk down the street make, wearing a fucking suit made out of dollar bills. And then when I get hit over the head and mugged, I'm going to be like, I should be allowed to blah, blah, blah. There's like the way Nobody you wish the world could be and the way it really is. I agree. But okay? I don't think that anyone should feel like they have access to you on those levels just because of what you're wearing. It's still not right. Absolutely, it's not right. But my so fucking. We're saying the same thing. I know, but my thing is. Is you know that there's creeps out there. Mm-hmm. You know that there's animals out there. Mm-hmm. Why would you put yourself in the crosshairs of them? Because I, well, because it's not about them. It's about what no, it's I about you. or the person it's about wants you. to wear. Yeah. And so if I want to go out and wear something sexy because I'm feeling myself, then I'll go out and wear something sexy. And I would expect that people would look at me, sure. But would I expect them to start like taking pictures and shit? No. I'm not saying pictures. Me. I'm saying the leering thing. Like as, yeah, as a guy, a, 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 yeah, on, you're going to get looks on, on the guy side of it is when a woman shows up with their tits hanging out. Mm-hmm. OK. And you look at her tits and then she gets mad. We're always like, well, fucking put them away. And then it's always like, well, I should have a right to have my tits out. They're my tits, you know, and then we we get yelled at like we're these fucking lunatics. And it's almost like like that in in policing. That's like entrapment. Well, I think there's... Well, first of all, no one's fucking thinking about you, all right? You're not fucking Mary and Barry. This is an entrapment, okay? So, yes, looking I'm not, at the tips, I'm just I guess, choke me just standing I'm just, there like, the entire time, it's like I start feeling fucking creeped out and weirded out and unsafe. So have your look and keep it moving. Okay, so that's definitely fair. Have your so, look and keep it moving. I love it. That's the rule. So let me ask you this. But don't try to invade my space and try to get into my head and all that kind of shit. Like, don't do that. Right. Have your look. Keep it moving. All right. Here's my question for you. What's the difference? Uh, what, what's the time? We, we'll put a shot clock on this. You know, in the NBA, they got a 24-second shot clock. The difference between having your look and leering. How, how, how many seconds before your shot clock violation and you turn over the ball? Um, I think anything beyond... Five seconds. Five seconds is a great look. Yeah, five seconds should do it. The old up and down, hmm, nice maybe little smile. Keep it moving. All right, now that took less than five seconds for you even to even describe all that. Well, so I, I think five. You want to hear five seconds? I'll show you five seconds. He's looking in one, two, three, four, five. So someone can look at you that long. Yeah, that's good. That's all right. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Look at you. You're a hot shit. All right. Five seconds. Any ladies out there, if you want to you add some time to that, you want to shave some off, there, that is the kind of thing that, that guys, though, because listen, sometimes, you know what's the worst thing? Is when you're not a fucking pervert, but the woman's gorgeous and she's wearing something so revealing, and then she comes at you like you're a fucking creep, and you're just like, you're wearing a cat suit. Like, what am I supposed, I'm, I'm not supposed to fucking look? Okay. That's all right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, you can. I, it's like I keep saying, look and keep it moving. <laughs> That's it. It you doesn't know what? have to be this whole fucking thing where you're like staring and panting. And by staring, you're trying to get my attention so that I react. It's like if you're going to stare, then I catch you staring. Just sorry it's for staring. You just you, you look beautiful. Thank you. Moving on. There you go. And then what if he, he tries to talk to you? I mean, he, you know, what's he supposed to do? You look good. He wants to fucking, uh, you know. Thank you. Keep it moving. Jesus Christ. Yeah. He can't. Well, what if he wants to ask you? What if, what if you know, what if you were single? Mm-hmm. I mean, you and know. What? Well, it depends. If I'm interested in, like, continuing the conversation or whatever, then yes, let's continue the conversation. But in all aspects, you got to, like, wait for, like, the opening to appear. You can't just force the opening. <laughs> that sounds gross. Yeah, but you know what I mean. <laughs> I don't. We're like door to door salesmen, single guys. We just we have to like fucking just knock on the door. Yeah. Hey, how you doing, up, Bill? Uh, I would really like to have some affection. Okay, thank you. Right. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, and that's the thing about it. It's like guys act like you know. It's you know. It's not like the fucking end of the world. Like you know, ten seconds later, you're talking and looking at somebody else. So. What is the big deal about moving on if there's not like the person saying like, you oh, I want to like yet. And you have music, fucking great. Po- I can't, I can't get mad at any of this. 
five second look keep it moving if i give you a look like i want to keep talking these are really basic ideas you know what i mean it is it's really it's right. really basic it's all like right but what wants what, to talk to you that they'll continue talking okay. to you oh thank you so much oh are are you here with friends da, da, da. boom you you, okay. now let me ask you so have you ever been out with a friend who's wearing something so revealing and they're getting so much of that attention they're complaining about it have you ever said to them like well maybe you should have put the girls away a little more you know, maybe you should have brought the garage door down a little bit more. No. <laughs> You've never said that? No. I've never said that to any of my girlfriends. Have nope. you ever thought it? You've ever felt it? No. You've never had a roommate or a girlfriend just show up and be like, oh my God, her hoo-ha is almost peeking out from underneath that dress. This is, oh, I'll tell you, this is going to be a rough one. Like, no. you know all these dogs? You never think that? I have to be honest with you, though. I, I don't think that most of my girlfriends dress revealingly okay so have you seen somebody that you don't know have you seen somebody that you don't know show up at a club Mm -hmm. okay with like you know body paint on and a pair of pasties (laughs) and just go like am i at carnival huh like what is she doing (laughs) you know what i'm talking about i'm just asking do women also look at the woman yes and look at her and be like what is that idiot doing um yeah probably Mm mm-hmm I think that's a yes, but for some reason you're not going to give it to me because I'm a guy. Well, no, I don't think that's it. I think there's definitely been times where you're just like, really, girl? Really? Okay. All right. And that's 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 about it. All right. That's kind my, of vague. That's really, girl? Really? Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. That's not a good answer. Or like if I here. see a girl wearing shorts that are like like denim shorts that are basically fitting you like underwear, I feel like that's a little extra to have your ass hanging out but if a girl wants to walk around with her ass hanging out it's like i'm not it doesn't trip me out but i do personally feel like it's a little bit much and why is that but i'm also getting older so i'm getting a little bit more conservative because i don't need to see your ass cheeks girl i don't need to see that but it's not a lot of times i will concede that it's not it's not for me it's not even necessarily for guys it's for her so despite how i might feel about wait wait despite (laughs) the way i might feel about how she's dressed that is her decision to be dressed how she's dressed and guess what it doesn't ruin my whole day and it doesn't send me into this tailspin of like oh my god i don't understand these girls are walking around half naked and i'm not supposed to look like wah wah five seconds Keep it moving. No, but here's my thing. Do you understand how fucking ridiculous it is For to, what? to walk down the street with your ass hanging out? I do understand how, how ridiculous stupid it is. That is. I do think it's ridiculous. I think it's too much. But again, it's not my fucking thing to get upset about what somebody else <laughs> you is know wearing. What's funny? You know what's funny? It's not my business. It's when I drive down the street. Being an ass man, if a woman has her ass hanging out, I'm psyched. I got like a free show. Yes, exactly. And there's that classic thing. There's that classic thing where, like, how guys can't do that. There's nothing we could do, like, physically like that that makes you guys almost crash your car. This is a hacky joke. But if we were walking down the street with half our nut bag hanging out, you'd be like, ah! Yeah, be gross. Because <laughs> that's not sexy. We're animals. I know. We're that's animals. Not sexy. A woman's ass can be sexy. Her breasts, her legs, her whole body is just, like, curvy and delicious and the whole bit. It is. A guy it's like a, it's ball like a, bag hanging out yeah, no. is disgusting. And you want to call the police. Yeah. If, yeah. If it was a car... <laughs> <laughs> like the woman's like a, a Lamborghini or a Ferrari or a Porsche. Like right? how many and women we're, we're like flashers a- do you know? Like have you ever heard of a woman like going into a place and exposing her genitals to like a room full of men Can and I then running something? out? As creepy as that is, <laughs> I, I, flashers are the funniest fucking thing ever to me. The fact that they, you know, the the classic one with the fucking wingtip shoes, the dark socks and just the raincoat on. And you just throw open your fucking <laughs> coat, showing your flaccid dick or whatever to me. And then people are horrified. Like yeah, the reaction that you like get. It's like traumatic. It's fucking weird. But that's the, that's the funny thing about it is that the, you would think that you're doing something because in the end you wanted to get a positive reaction. But to fucking throw it open and people are literally repulse like, ah! When you do that, mm-hmm. looking at your naked body, the fact that they get off on that yeah. is fucking hilarious to it's, me. It's so, it's, yeah, it's gross. It's just it's a terrible. dick. Ugh. It's just a, it's a dick outside, you know? Wants yeah, to be free. It's like, no, no, it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't want to be free. It doesn't need to be free. Keep it tucked away. 
and your little underpants. And you know, I can understand most fetishes. That was the, the, for the life of me. I don't get what do you do? What do you do? And then you do that, and then what? You jerk off to the screams still ringing in your head. Oh. <laughs> Is that what they do? I don't know. I don't know. It's just I don't even know if they do it. When I was on living, I don't in- think that they do it. Like I think Hollywood made it be the raincoat because they couldn't show a dick on film for whatever reason. So they just had the guy go like that, so it would block all of it. And you just see his naked legs, and you would, it was understood that he was naked. But I think really, it's for the most part, it's probably sweatpants, and they yeah. probably yank him down, and then they have it right underneath their junk, and they go. Oh. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Do you like one of all those? Right. All right. All right. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's <laughs> gross. I remember being in a New York City subway car and this guy started masturbating in front of me and I ran out and I was pretty much in tears. It was so upsetting and it was just so, it's like, it's violating, you know, just someone staring at you and just being like, why are you laughing? It's not funny. It was really upsetting. See, you don't fucking get it. I know. I, I think you should have laughed at him and pointed right at his dick. Well, you, you, you That's exactly gone. what he wanted. He wanted to like me to keep like watching it and like. No, he wanted you to it. be fucking shocked. At with, I don't well, know who the either, fuck knows he either wants. Way, either way, either way was just horrifying and it felt like it felt terrible. It was like it was. It was a, a, a real violation of me. You know, like you can't just like. See a stranger and just start jerking, perform- off. jerking off. What the Take fuck is a mental wrong with picture, you? keep it moving, get home, and then rub one out. Yeah, save like it for a gentleman your, for your dirty studio roach infested apartment. Well, why? Just because he jerks off on the train doesn't mean he can't be successful nine to five. I don't really care about his his success if he feels the need to jerk off. In Maybe public. he's one of those guys. He's like, you are not a success. You are a failure. <laughs> I got to think afterwards, after you're done doing it, like at some point when you come home and you're brushing your teeth and you look yourself in the mirror, you got to be like, wow, I'm that guy. I'm that guy that jerks off to people on the train. I'm sure they hate themselves <laughs> and they should. <laughs> look at Cleo, half on the bed, half off. And I'm sitting over here like, what do you want? What do you want from me? All right. Halloween drama. Okay. Yeah. So getting back to that thing, he didn't do something wrong. The other guy's a fucking creep. Yeah. You should Absolutely. definitely like interject when shit like that is going on and let other men know that's not cool. All right. Hologram comedians. Hey, Breaking Bad Bill. Have you heard that a comedy club in New York might showcase Carlin and Pryor holograms? Uh, okay. I mean, I don't, I don't get that. That's fucking weird. That's like a live wake to me. Why? I don't understand the point of. It's so yeah, stupid. It's just go home and go home and watch. It's going to be material you've already seen. So all you got to do is you just go home and you just put in the DVD. I would like to have been there for that Tupac hologram at Coachella a couple of years ago. That would have been interesting, only because you know you're probably like on a ton of drugs at Coachella and stuff like that so you're just like <gasps> like there are all these videos of people like recording it yeah. you know on I their phone and you hear people in the background going I knew it and people be like I told you I told like he was actually alive and then they're like oh no wait it's a no, you know what I don't like about it <laughs> what I don't like about it is Tupac didn't agree to do the gig he didn't yeah. agree on the money who owns the rights to his likeness his mom probably and she probably Gave it the Let, okay. Can I tell you something? Oh, it, it, really? What is that? The after school special version of entertainment? I'll tell you right now. I bet I'm, I'm going right now in, in, in the future. In the future, I bet all dead celebrities, like, like fucking scumbag people in this business, will own their likeness. They'll somehow trick their fucking next to whoever into fucking selling the rights to them, and they'll still have these people touring, and they'll put together like these these hologram fantasy teams and P- and they'll make money off of these people and, and their loved ones won't get any of the cash. That's what I'm getting. That's going to be the lawsuit okay. in the next 20 years that uh, a dead fucking George Carlin went on tour and grossed $20 million or something like that and none of his next to kin got any money. And then some fucking little piece of shit will have no comment. Yeah. You don't think so? That's what I, I think know. about I that. I hope that doesn't happen. Uh, of course it will. They are, they're already fucking. They've been. Used, they started using them in, in commercials. They had like a dead John Wayne selling like fucking an Xbox or something. <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> All right, cross country. Watch them. Here we go. Cross country. Oh, I already did that one. Oh, this lady said really quickly. Uh, she was saying she's a twenty five year old girl and she's uh, going to be moving across the country. She's driving L A to uh, Los Angeles. She's driving the car by herself. Obviously, get the whole fucking Please thing tuned up. Please be careful. Yeah, right? 
<clears throat> That's what I was saying. I, I said she should do it with somebody else. I mean, yeah, she'll be she'll be able to handle it. She'll be she'll be all right. Just be careful. Yeah, just make sure that car is running perfectly, and you know, make sure you don't stop in any sketchy fucking motels. It always That's makes me think of your bit about um, murderers buffet. What did you call it? A serial killer buffet. Serial killer buffet. The motel. Motels. They just walk down. Floor. Yeah. Well, your door opens up to the parking lot. To the bar, yeah. Serial killer buffet. <laughs> I'm killing this guy. I'm killing that guy. That one's all right. Yeah. You stayed in that fucking hotel from uh, No Country for Old Men. Right. All right. Legal Zoom, everybody. I got to do a couple of. Uh, you want to listen to me do the reads and then sign off? Sure. All right. Jesus. Uh, Legal Zoom, everybody. Somewhere along the line, I know I pissed you off on that the flasher thing. Mm-hmm. You sh- did I? No, I don't know. Just. In general. Just but an, go on. In, just an in general annoyance mm-hmm. of me? Yep. But please. Really? Read your, read your ads. I come back off a two-week tour conquering fucking so goddamn hero. I was so happy to have you. I was so happy And to within have you. 24 fucking hours, you're already sick of me. That's what you're saying? Unfucking believe. You know what, Nia? If you ever leave, <laughs> if you ever leave me I'm, for the rest of my life, I'm just going to be that guy. I'm going to have dogs. I'm going to have dogs, and I'm going to go down to a massage parlor every day, get one rubbed out, and I'm going to be good for the rest of the day. Dogs and the fucking NHL package. Tell my jokes. That's it. Yeah. Your, your lawyer goes to call me. I'll be, what, is, what does she want? What does old oh, Sweetie Cakes want? Don't huh? talk about that. Huh? Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> you dumb bowl of oatmeal. Is that oatmeal or is that sugar corn smacks? No, it's... Uh, Are you steel cutties? Granola that has dried banana in it for some fucking reason. All right. Legal Zoom. You don't like bananas. I don't like the texture. I hate when you say that. Why? It's always a food that I like, and then you go, why don't you like it? They're deli- I don't like the texture. You're such a narcissist that I can't even not like a certain <laughs> food, and you get offended by it. Like, who, what do you care if no, I don't like bananas? certain words I don't me. like. I don't it like. annoys me. Why, Bill? I don't like texture. Who says that? It's a legitimate thing. I don't like the texture of banana. It feels weird in my mouth. And it's not a sofa. Like it. It's a fucking piece of food. Okay, texture can refer to things that aren't just like furniture. Furniture. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I just hated it. Ugh. I don't like the texture. Like you're some food critic. Just be happy God made it and eat it. Good luck. <laughs> Legal sum. <laughs> T- say that. Say that someday. Someday Legal in the zoom. afternoon. Uh, yeah, you're gonna go. You go meet God. You tell us. You know, it's my I had a great time. Thank you for like. By the way, can you work on the banana thing? I, I didn't like the texture. This isn't like a human being. I'm allowed a goddamn to not monkey like bananas. Throwing a bunch of different what is combinations. What does it mean? Not all natural. So what? It's like your weed, man. I don't have to like weed. Is oh yeah, well that's a good thing. Hey, it's good to see you. Yeah, you too. It is good to see you. I'm psyched to be home. Oh Jesus! All right. I like how you shout into a microphone, which is designed to project your voice. No, I don't. Louder I, than I, it I, actually I, is. I pull my my head away. I'm a master at using the microphone. If you actually yes. took the time to watch one of my sets one time, oh please, and you watch I've the ebb and flow, of your and sets. you watch the ebb and flow, the way I bring that crowd up, I push them away. Yeah, it's a real I bring emotional them back. journey. It is that you take. My dick jokes have three acts <laughs> to them. <laughs> You know what, Nia? I was so excited to see you, and I still am. And for you to sit here coming back, and I'm not, I'm not feeling the love from you. You still look cute. With that nose, huh? Thank you. No, I'm excited to have you back. You've been gone for two weeks. It's great that you're home. You sound like you're reading a statement from a, for a corporation. <laughs> we are excited to have him back. Uh, he I was am. gone I'm for two weeks. I'm excited to have you back. We uh, still um, haven't gotten all the information, so we can't comment on anything else at this time. Right. Exactly. You look at that goddamn dog. That thing slept eight hours last night. I literally walked it around the block, gave it food, and it is just out like a light. It's ha- right now, people. It's it's on its dog bed. Three quarter of its dog, its body is on the dog bed, and then like its head and neck is off. Looks like it passed out. Like it, like it fainted. <laughs> All right, that's the podcast for this week. Thank you to everybody f- uh, for listening. And uh, hey, Nia, you- you're a huge uh, cheesesteak fan, right? I love cheesesteak. I love cheesesteak. I don't like the it's way you said that. It's my favorite sandwich. I felt like you were leering at it. Just look at the sandwich and keep it moving. <laughs> keep it moving. You're like, I love cheesesteaks. It's my favorite sandwich in the whole world is a, All right. is a Philly cheesesteak. Do you have to say Philly cheesesteak or can you just say cheesesteak? You, they just when say, you're in Philly, yeah. you say cheesesteak. But yeah. everywhere else, when you you're in, say Philly? When you're in fucking uh, France, you just order onion soup. 
You know, go, okay. can I get French onion soup? They're like, well, you're in France, you fucking idiot. So everything here is going to be French <laughs> onion soup. <laughs> I guess that's true. Actually, oh, whatever. Okay. Um, everyone's telling me to go to John's Roast Pork. And doesn't that just sound good? The name? Oh, it's a it's a place to eat. Yeah, because what are the two what are the two touristy places? It's Gino's and what else? Oh, oh come I on. forget. Gino and uh, Rabinowitz's. Yep. Gino's. <laughs> oh wait, Philly. Yeah, there's the two. They're right two next to each other. Places, right? Yeah. Hang on, hang on. Gino's steaks, steaks and. Uh, and then the other one. <laughs> I don't know how to look it up, and I can't do it with one fucking hand. Even, but even those were good. Last time me and Verzi went there, we, we, got, we both got, we stood in line. He stood in one, I stood in the other. We got one of each, cut them in half, and then... Oh, did like a, a taste test? Yeah. All right, which top 10 you, spots. Did, are, you, are you willing to reveal which one you liked better? Um, Pats. Oh, Pats. All right, so one of them had a better cheese. I, I can never remember this shit. Do you get or the I like cheese? the bread Do you better? Get whiz? I don't like whiz. I like real cheese. Me too. I like the real cheese. Look how fucking good those look. And this is the thing too. You guys don't understand. Out here, they just don't have good delis. They can't make good. It's a dry air or something. They can't make good bread. The sandwiches. The There's fucking that place the pizza that I is to go fucked to downtown. Up. That uh, pastrami place. That's supposed to be really good in downtown LA. I forget the name of it. They talked about it on that show, The Comedians. Oh, okay. You know, with Josh Gad and... Um, yeah, you mean that fucking Billy brilliant Crystal? show that I absolutely love that they're not bringing back for some fucked Did up they reason? Did cancel that show? Yeah, it sucks. I love that show. Listen, I got I to gotta upload this because I got to get on with the day here. Hour and 25 minutes. Huh? Because you stuck around. All right, everybody, go fuck yourselves. I'll check in on you on Thursday. What's up, everybody? And welcome back to the Anything Better podcast, NFL edition for week number nine with your host, Paul Verzi over here, Bill Burr over there, Andrew Paul Verzi over here. Over here, guys. We're going into week number nine, sponsored by our favorites, BetMGM. It's the BetMGM app, everybody. It's the best app. It's the best lines out there. What do you do to get it? All you do is you download the app. You put as little as $10 into the account, and you will get up to $200 in bets regardless of the outcome of your first wager it's an incredible deal please bet responsibly here's how it works you download the app you use our code the anything better code which is burr 200 b-u-r-r 200 and put as little as ten dollars in you also have a survivor pool where you could pick a team not against the spread just have that team win and you keep going every week so on and so forth and until you lose and then you're done but there are still prizes for that as well um. Yeah, man. Let's get into this, dude. That was a, a great f- read, Paul. You look what? right in the camera, right in Mister Mrs. America. I thought that was fantastic. Look, dude. You know something? When you're when you're a pro, you're a pro. Yeah. Hey, you know, Paul. You know they can't teach what you just did. Hey, who am I? <laughs> <laughs> um, dude. dude, how about the Texas Rangers? I know. I did you know. watch any of that series? It was. I mean, it was just fun to watch. I mean, it was. I mean, they kind of blew through them, but uh. I'm really happy, man. I'm really happy for Texas Rangers fans. They've been what, dude? That they, that's the old Washington Senators. They moved in 1962, or or came back in '62. That's right. After the, the original Senators moved to Minnesota and became the Twins. Yeah, one of the most fucked up things ever. The Senators left from lack of support, and then they gave them the Senators again, a different Senators. It's yeah. like the Cleveland Browns became the Ravens, but even the Cleveland had to wait. I'm it's doing nice. Rain Man shit here, Paul. I'm just saying I'm happy for the Rangers. I don't know what's going on with my camera. It looks nice like I have the see. flu and poison ivy. <laughs> it's nice to see a team like the Rangers win. What was not nice to see was two of our pitchers that we dumped were on the, on their staff. So, uh, you know, you're just watching x We had one of them. We had one of them, too. Yeah, he, he came to Boston first. Is anything I, worse? Is anything worse than watching a team celebrate a championship when players were on your team earlier in that season? I hate that. I'm like, ah, yeah, that it doesn't bug me. There it he doesn't, is. They, they, that doesn't bug me. They're, listen, they, they don't want to fucking pay them, yeah. right? So they understand now that they, that that they don't care about them. So they bounce around the league. That's just the way it is. You know you what know, I do oh, when I see love that? them when they're with you. You're happy when they win somewhere else. Hey, Mookie Betts, good, good, good on you. We should have paid you. We didn't. Bill, you know what I do when I see an ex-Yankee or an ex-Nick winning somewhere else? I just go, there he is. <laughs> just makes me feel like, there he is. Guys at the foul line. And there he yeah. is. Guy, our guy. There he, is. Is. Um, he was in grade school with us. Dude. Look at him. All grown up. Winning a I, championship. 
I got to tell you something, man. I got to talk about this on the show. It's one of the most disappointing Giants losses. Me and my son watched, dude, Lucas was. Dude, 29 seconds left, and we were so dominant defensively, and our kicker just missed a 30-yarder, and we go to overtime and lose. I mean, it was a rough one against the Jets. Oh. Well, Paul, I got to tell you something right now. Like, that fuck, I bet the Ravens last week, okay, like, I had to go for a walk after that loss. Yeah. I am like, uh, that That took my heart. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm all right with it. Yeah. <laughs> no. Well, what am I going to say? That my wife runs around on me? I'm like that fucking guy in that joke right now as a gambler. Like, I was just, Paul, in the first half, I have the fucking Ravens laying eight and a half. I think I had eight and a half. Other people had nine and a half. I have eight and a half. I mean, who am I, Paul? Nice. I'm getting a point in my favor, right? Yeah, yeah. Ravens are going to fucking kill him, right? Arizona comes out like gangbusters playing great. They're beating them in the first half. I could have handled that. Paul, that happens. Who saw the Broncos <laughs> beating the Chiefs? I mean, just you know, every once in a while, the underdog just comes up, shows up to play, and the other guys, you know, they just lose. I can handle that. Yeah. Paul, what I can't handle <laughs> is that as an American, <laughs> I'm watching the game of the week. I'm watching fucking Joe Burrow and the Bengals, right? Healthy Joe Burrow. Oh, healthy the Joe Burrow. You know, and I'm looking at the ticker. Holy shit. Fucking Ravens come back. They're up by 20, 15 or something like that. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to go two and two. I'm not even, like, they were so up, Paul. I stopped watching the ticker and I'm just enjoying how great the Bengals are playing. It was a great game against the 49ers, unless you're a 49ers fan. And then the game ends, Paul. They just click over and the Cardinals are lining up for a field goal. Ravens are up by 10. And there's like, I don't know, a few seconds left. And I'm going, what the fuck is this? What happened? What happened, Paul? Evidently, oh. they, they score a touchdown. They kick an onside fucking kick. They recover it. So now oh. they line up. So the guy kicks the ball, Paul. And it goes wide. Oh, Billy Freckles. Two and two, baby. Flag on the play. Oh. Flag on the fucking play. And because it was before the whistle, the the uh, the Ravens couldn't decline it. They back it up five. They give him a breakfast ball. And he goes up there and he kicks it just inside the upright. Fuck you, Freckles. Fuck your dreams. I got <laughs> And fuck whatever you wanted to do in this country. Dude, I literally, when I was sending you those texts, Paul, I was in my backyard. And I was walking in a fucking circle. Oh. Oh, dude, I was getting texts from Bill, and he was, you know, what's funny is that night, Bill, a, a Thursday night, the same thing. I got the, I had the Bucks, and I'm going, oh, I'm going to be 0-1 on Thursday. Anything worse than being 0-1 on Thursday? And all of a sudden, I got the backdoor cover at the last second, and I was like, all right, woo. <laughs> but I know that oh, yeah. sucks, dude. The feel, Listen, that'll happen to you once or twice a year. But No, get- no, 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 Paul. I don't want to hear that. I no. can take a loss like a fucking man. Okay, what happened in Phoenix, Arizona was wrong. <laughs> I tweeted, I'm going to start a support group. Like, dude, that's one of those ones. Because you know what it was, Paul? Yeah. I counted it as a win in my head. I know. It's, I know. I was going down Bourbon Street, Paul. I had the fucking <laughs> baton. I was fucking high kicking down the street. The trophy was coming out of the locker room like the Spurs Paul, in game the, six. The wire was off the champagne bottle. We had the goggles on. And then somebody said, hey, 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 wait a second, wait a second. And it's not even, hey, wait a second, you lost. Wait a second. You're now going to watch them. You're going to watch yourself win again oh. with the missed field goal, and then there's going to be a flag. That looked a lot like a tissue for you to cry in, oh. ironically enough. And then he kicked some fucking knuckleball that looked like they, they dragged some guy out of the crowd and the old punt pass and kick shit. Oh. Yeah, I know. So, Paul, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to tell you right now. I am a I I am I'm a one wing bird this week. I don't know what's up. I don't know what's down. I have no fucking idea. Okay, and I'm I don't love the lines, dude. And I'm looking at Americans right now. Do not listen to me this week. All right, my, what do you I mean, you 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 had one. I think you had one. You dude, you had like two, one or two bad. What are you nuts? Uh, what do you mean? What am I nuts, Paul? This happens to me every year in October. Do you know what gambling is over an entire football season for me? It's like playing golf. I give a fuck for the first whole four holes. <laughs> then I just start going, what the fuck am I doing here? You know? Um, you're holding on too tight. All right, go ahead, Bill. You hold on too tight. You hold it on too tight. Uh, you hold it on too tight. Uh, all right, you get first pick this week, Bill. 
You know what? I, sh- I should have had like a glass of wine right there. I sounded like some woman trying to get over her fucking last boyfriend. All right. I got first pick, Paul. Hey, and you know me. You know me, Paul. When I got first pick, you think I'm going to fucking act like I don't? Where the hell are my picks here? Oh, this is more shit to add. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Bet MGM. Bet MGM. They're going to call me and just be like, you know, I understand you're talking about the emotion, but try to make gambling seem more fun. I'm going to take the Minnesota Vikings on the road, laying oh. four. Why not against the, against the Falcons? I think the Falcons had their moment. This is what I think, Paul. I know the exact opposite thing's going to happen, but I'm going to take the Vikings. You know why, Paul? Because I like the color purple. I like the movie, The Color Purple. I liked Prince. My daughter likes the color purple. I just think they have prettier uniforms. All right. I don't like the Falcons, how they, 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 they just put on black because Jerry Glanville wanted to seem like, you know, his dick was an inch longer than it really was. <laughs> you know, they, they were a red team. They were red and gray. But all the way back to the great William Andrews, Billy White Shoes Johnson, Steve Bartkowski, R.C. Thielman. Go ahead. All right. I... I like this game all week. I don't love the half a point, but I'm going to take it. I I still don't believe in the Jets. Uh, I think the Jets are a bad team. I think the Giants let them off the hook and should have won that game. The Chargers are starting to roll. The Chargers got Eckler back. Austin Eckler is back. I think the Chargers, it's three and a half. I think fucking hate the half a point if it was three i would take it to the bank today oh, but on, i'm gonna paul, take you know it. i hate when you have hate in your heart uh i'm you gonna can't take... do that paul i'm friends with you because you 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 have this spirit that i want that's what i get out of this relationship <laughs> so when i see you start to act like me it makes me lose hope <laughs> uh i'm gonna take the los angeles chargers going into new york jets and winning that game by more than three they're more i mean talented. Can do a wait, wait. They beat the shit out of the Bears, didn't they? I like that. They're coming they in there. The Bears, but they also got Eckler. They're starting to come into their own. I think they're getting healthy. I I think their defense is good enough. And I just I know the Jets have a great defense. The Jets don't have a quarterback, man. I just don't yeah. think the, the Jets don't have the thing. I think I, I think, think the Chargers have better uniforms. Would you say that? I would say that, and I would they also win on the say fashion level too. If yeah. the Chargers okay. win the game, they get to fu- they get to five hundred. And I think they're going to get to 500. And I think this is a team that they could get to 500 over. So Chargers have, have better looking fans. I have better looking fans, right? I mean, Jets are animals. Better, yeah, beautiful stadium. You know, yeah, Justin Jets, you know, like Jet fans, they come out from underneath the Port Authority. Justin Jet Herbert's got to work with their hands and sometimes <laughs> fall on their faces. <laughs> and Justin Herbert's got a nice head of hair. He's six foot six. Good looking kid. When a Charger fan falls on his face, it's usually off a surfboard. It's a nice soft landing pole. I was thinking the surfboard. Yeah. yeah. Kissed yeah. by the sun. Paul Verzing. Wow. For the win. LA All right. Char- I'm going to take LA Chargers. LA Chargers. I like it. Uh, I'm going to take the, uh, I'm going to take the, uh, the fucking Houston Texans minus two and a half because my agent told me, you know, my agent's a big time gambler. You know, he's got real estate. He's got money hidden in the floors of all of his, all of his buildings that he owns, you know, I'm in debt with him. So <laughs> it's minus two and a half. They're playing the Buccaneers. They're both three and four. Uh, that adds up to a six and eight record collectively. And I like that. I like when two, three, and four teams play each other, Paul. And it adds up to a six and eight overall record. When two, three, and four teams with collectively, it adds up to six and eight play each other in the first week in November. Historically, Ball Gingers win that bet. So I'm taking the Texans minus two and a half. All right. I like how you blew all of that off like that. Any of that made sense. No, no, I'm just looking at my, I'm, I'm looking at my pick selfishly. Hey, I'm just uh, listening. Just um, listening. I'm going to take a healthy Joe Burrow and the and the Bengals uh, minus one and a half at home against the Buffalo Bills. I don't think these are the Buffalo. I don't think these are your grandfather's Buffalo Bills. Or maybe I, they are. I, or maybe they are. I, you know, th- I'm worried about the Bills. I feel like they're a wild animal, and that's a they're, they're a wounded animal, and that's a short bus trip. That's a short bus trip. Uh, I think that Joe Burrow's been healthy for one game this year. I think this is going to be a, a, another healthy game for him. I think Jamar Chase, I just like them. They didn't get rid of T. Higgins. I think they're going to be raring to go or roaring to go. Sorry. Uh, hey, Paul, like the big cats are doing well. The Lions, the Bengal Tigers, right? Hey, the Jaguars. All right. Uh, I got Joe Burrow and the Bengals minus one and a half against the Bills in Cincinnati. 
All right. I don't know why I'm going to do this. Uh, I'm going to take the New York Giants. Oh. Getting a point and a half. I, uh, you know, one of their wide receivers last week didn't say it, but he did say it. And uh, I don't know what's going on out there. I really don't know what's going on out there. It seems to me, Paul, like they have all the pieces, but they're just not coming together. I don't know why. I like the Giants defense. And uh, I like the Raiders defense, too. I think this is a great number, minus one and a half. It's going to be a close game. And I think in a close game, I'm going to put my uh, money on Daniel Jones. Provided he doesn't fall down, I think he's going to cross that goal line. And uh, <laughs> I'm going to get a win. I like well, I'm that. just shooting from the hip this week. I, I'm not going to lie. That was a pick I was going to take. You, you, That's great. Oh, I thought you were staying away. I shouldn't have done that. I'm no, sorry. No, Let me no. take the Pats. I'll take the Dude, Pats. I don't give I don't, a fuck. No, I'm not taking the Pats. You're not taking the Pats against no. the Commanders and no. Chiefs? Here's With what a I'm little baggie of Coke in the corner? How much great is it that Joe Biden's fucking son's doing blow in the White House? Hey, they call it the White House for a reason. I love that he went like this and went up to a baby. He goes, hey. Hey. <laughs> Do you, do you think that do you think that any of Donald Trump's straws were left over from all the McDonald's he had? Wouldn't that be hilarious if he? Had, no, they <laughs> had the doing... condiments. He had the condiments left in the drawer. He had like the sauces. No, he's, yeah, he's using a leftover. Like Trump had a whole drawer full of straws from all the McDonald's Coca Cola he drinks, and he's taking them and he's doing blow. I mean, it's where this country's at, Paul. It's fucking uh... fantastic. This country right now is in the second half of Goodfellas, when we're driving around looking up at the helicopters. Should I do this? I don't know if I'm going to do this. The Dolphins Chiefs is an absolute scary stay away from game. And there's Isn't something it? And it, it's in Kansas City. The Chiefs are coming off a That was like that was like Halloween. Like I feel like someone else was dressed up as the Chiefs. Oh, that's right. Jake the Snake. See Jake the Snake just jumped in and said it's in Germany. It's in Germany. Oh. So, so, oh shit, that changes. Guten Tag. On Freiliner. Actually, I like I like the Dolphins' chances in Germany better. I'm going to take. Well, historically speaking, on in Nazi territory, the Dolphins have done much better. I don't think Hitler would have approved of Native Americans, so I yeah. I think they're going to be getting the home cooking out there. I'm taking them. I'm taking, taking them. the Dolphins. I'm taking the Dolphins plus one. You're and taking a half. Nick Kroll's Dolphins in Germany. Yes, <laughs> I'm taking to, to to beat the BTK Killers, fucking Chiefs. I like that, Paul. You know what? If it was if it was in Kansas City after their last performance, I'd be afraid. I'd be afraid of it. In Germany, I I like the Dolphins. I like Tua. Let's do that. Dolphins plus one and a half. Oh, this is Paulie Doggy Week. Paulie Doggy Week. Well, I haven't taken any fucking dogs this week, so I feel like I got to take one. Uh, because I I like. I mean, I'm kind of liking the Saints, but they're laying eight and a half, Paul. I don't like that eight. I would like this 6.5. I would like two points in my fucking favor. You know, Paul? Hey, Paul, wh why can't it ever go my way? You know, I'm not hurting anybody. I, I was think looked anybody over. gives a fuck about me. I was looked over. I was passed over, Mikey. I'm not I'm dumb smart. Like, they, like everybody says. Not like everybody says. I can pick a game. <laughs> was it? I half a point. Um, <laughs> all right, Paul, sneaky um, Pete going into Baltimore. He's going to get himself oh. some crepe cakes and he's going to get himself a little side. You know what? And, uh, with a side of fucking Hooters wait waitress action. And I feel like he's going to take, I, I like sneaky Pete getting five and a half. I like him getting five and a half. I like him, you know. Uh, you love sneaky Pete. I love you sneaky Pete. I love the Ravens too. These are my two ex-girlfriends here. You can't stay away from these teams and when they play together. <laughs> it's a love fest. Uh, all right, man. Oh, man, this is. What about this game, huh? Dude, what about the fucking Monday night special? Uh, the fucking guy was wide open for a goddamn touchdown. Jimmy G. What's happening to Jimmy G, man? Jimmy G. Poor Jimmy G, man. Jimmy G, be... Jimmy G. I, I mean, I, I, you know, he's like a neighborhood kid. He's out there playing stickball, right? You want him yeah. to come on, right? Look, he went I to his Super go Bowl. from rags to riches. So Jimmy G looks like he's like going to be like a top-notch restaurant concierge. Just hey, everybody, he's just a nice, good-looking. 
<laughs> when he's older, like when he's old and gray, yeah, come inside. It's my right. restaurant. Ladies love Jimmy G. Who doesn't like? I mean, he's a hard kid to not like. Well, I mean, I, when you got the fucking Monday Night Special, Paul, and we haven't fucking hit one. I feel like in a goddamn year, and the guy, there's literally nobody around him. Fred dude. McMurray, what the fuck's the guy's name? The guy's running down the goddamn sideline. Oh, uh, Dante McGillicuddy, what is his name? <laughs> Dante McGillicuddy. Tayshawn that- Hurlowitz. Um, all right, my last pick here. DeAndre something or other? I don't know, dude. This is rough, man. My last pick. You took the Texans. You took the Seahawks. And I took it in the ass on that Ravens game. <laughs> oh, you know. <laughs> oh, Paul. Paul, that broke me. That literally, that broke me. I could have gone on Oprah. And if she asked me it, Three questions about that game. I would have broken down crying and she would have been like, we got the interview. Should I? No. The, I was going to say Patriots, but they're, I just, they're just not. All right, I'm going to do it. You ready? We have a lot of injuries on defense. Everybody's coming down on Bill Belichick. He has a great defense. He does not have an offensive line. I have won the last two Thursdays. Okay? Like Bill said, it going in Thursday, it's like a guy in the ring just coming out <laughs> Oh, so, oh, yeah. We were saying when you pick the Thursday game, when you pick the Thursday game, that's like, you know, when boxers come out and they feel each other out the first round. You know that guy when the thing, the bell rings and the guy comes running out of the corner, like meets the guy three quarters of the way across the ring. That's what betting the Thursday game is. It's Peter McNeely versus Tyson. Yeah. All right. Let's. Am I going to win this week or lose? Let's fuck. I want, I want, I need a decision early. <laughs> ah, that's perfect. It's Hagler Hearns. Hagler Hearns. They just go. <laughs> All right. I, I picked the last two Thursdays. Hopefully I can make it three in a row. I am going to take the Pittsburgh Steelers tonight. Minus three against a new quarterback Titans. And who do they Mike, got? Mitch Trubisky. Mike Tomlin. What? Who do they is got? It, uh, is it Mitch Trubisky? Because uh, what's his didn't I, what's his face? Uh, whatever the fuck the guy's name is, that's the quarterback for the uh, Steelers. Steelers. Or, Kenny got uh, Kenny Pickett will play. Kenny Pickett. Okay. Kenny Pickett will play. That's a Min- tough name for a quarterback. Minus three. He's got pick in his own name. I know. I know. Teddy interception. <laughs> uh, <laughs> interception it. How many times did the paper have a field day with his? Uh, well, I figured he made it to the NFL, so probably not that many. Um, That's like when the Patriots had a kicker named Scott Sisson. Oh, the guy missed one, and it was missing Sisson. That was it. <laughs> my um, favorite one, Ali Haji Shank. Oh my god! Is that Ali Haji Sheik. Oh my god! Dude, field goal a- kickers. Oh, they get some rough ones. I just think Mike Tomlin, dude. Mike Tomlin at home on a prime time under the lights game. He just the, the the Steelers are always in it, and Joe Bartnick's going to be in town doing stand up. The hometown oh, hero. Oh, if Joe Bartnick's in town, then you know if if Joe Bartnick and his dad go to the game, forget it's it. over. Uh, yeah, I'm going to take moves the line. That Here's moves the, the line. If Vegas finds out Joe Bartnick's doing stand up while the Steelers are home, that moves the line. Here's the deal: if somebody put a gun to my fucking head and said the Steelers are at home on a prime time game versus the Titans, and the line is three, who you taking? Done. I got the Steelers. I think that's going to be some black and blue football there, Paul. Oh, I'm, you think I'm, a lot of I'm here. I'm here in helmets, fucking crunching. It's not. It's not going to come off like a Thursday game. They're going to have a simplistic game plan on a four day prep. But I'm telling you, there's going to be some hits, Paul. <laughs> and I'm not talking Phil Spector. Uh, all right, we got. You, you know what's under your head? You in your what, mouth. You know what time it is, Bill? Oh Jesus Christ! It's time for us to fucking pick one of these. I got to pick a different song. All right, here we go. We have the Los Angeles Chargers minus three and a half at MetLife Stadium versus the Jets. The Jets are four and three and the Chargers are three and four, but healthy now. Uh, I love the Chargers. I love the Chargers too. I love the Chargers. I love the Chargers. I love Justin Herbert to throw one. Okay, I'm with you, Paul. And Paul, I'm, I'm fucking lockstep. All right, so we got the Chargers down the aisle right now, Paul. We got the Chargers, and we got the nice long blonde lock. 
Blonde lock, fucking big arm kid throwing one. What else, Phil? I mean, if you look at the Chargers and Jets at the quarterback position, I mean, come on, Paul. That's like me standing next to Brad Pitt, okay? <laughs> uh, and that's a, oh my God, look at that. And what is that? Did you know how hard it is for me as a 5'8 kid to stand next to a guy that's 6'6 six, six with long locks? It almost looks like he's like visiting me at the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we didn't do the Hair Hall of Fame yet this week. Oh, Who my God. Oh, can we? Can I use a young kid or no? No, because oh, okay. you got no hair hall of fame, dude. Yo, we got to have some criteria here. You got to be over fifty. Okay, over fifty, <laughs> and it's as thick as when you were in fucking elementary school. <laughs> oh shit! Who do we got? Um, <clears throat> great head of hair, over fifty. Over just 50. anybody in the public eye, and you're just looking at them like my, like they can still, like if they wanted to. They could get like the latest haircut. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like whatever haircuts in style, you could still do it. <laughs> like Jimmy Johnson. Uh, Jimmy Johnson could do a mohawk. He could do one of those Conor McGregor fades. Yeah, I got to look this up real quick. Great head of hair is. I would say Howie Long. Did we put Howie Long in? Was he yeah, part I of the. It might be thinning though. Great hair. Yeah. Uh, over. He's like one of those guys. If his hair is thinning, then he's like a baseball player that retired with 2,990 hits. <laughs> They're showing Then you got to be nice to the sports writers to get in. Because uh, we know so how athletic they are. I got other, three minutes, Paul, and then I got I to gotta go. We'll be done in three. I got it clocked. We didn't finish the Monday night special, though. We got the Chargers minus three and a half. We got Justin Herbert to throw one. And we got Chuck Muncie to rush. We got uh, we got do blow with fucking Joe Biden's kid, Justin Herbert to throw one, Chargers to win by four, and um, what do you think, Austin? Uh, and a safety, no. Austin Eckler to score <laughs> or or Jets to Chargers to get a turnover? Can we do that? All right, let's do this. Justin Herbert to throw one, Chargers to win, and uh, Austin the Eckler. Over-under. Over-under. Oh, you love the over-under. 40. You no, no, over? I'm, not, I'm, just, I just, I'm just putting it out there, Paul. It's like over an appetizer. 40. Would you care for some, or would you like to go right to your entree? Jets don't score a lot, though, and the Chargers do, and 40 is a perfect number. I let's mean, you just, that just came right out of your mouth like you fucking already saw the game, so I'll go with that. Yeah, so let's do Austin Eckler anytime touchdown. <clears throat> okay. Unless you don't want to. What do you want to do? Brees Hall touchdown? Jets? What do, you, what do you want? He's the Jets running back. He's good. Dude, fuck the Jets. Okay. Okay. I just, I, you know, God bless those people in the situation they're in, but there's nothing we can do about it. All right. All right? Austin Eckler. Austin Eckler's going to score. Austin Eckler, anytime touchdown. Herbert to throw on Chargers to win. Let's this do is it. The, yeah, and this is the middle of the season, Paul, where teams are going to be who the fuck they are. All right? Yeah. And the Jets, they're, they're, they're going over the side. There you go. That's the picks. Chargers to win. Herbert to throw on. Austin Eckler, anytime touchdown, guys. This has been a preview for a week. A number nine. Go to the BetMGM app. Download it. Put in $200. Uh, put in By the $10. way, Paul Versey, three and one again. Right? Or are you two and two? No, I was two and two. What are you gonna so do? you went you but but what'd you do for October? Come on, dude. Fifteen and five. I mean, that's a that's a gaudy record. It's a gaudy record. Paul, death taxes and Paul Bursey against the ball. Oh, the chain is out. The chain <laughs> is out and here comes Paul Bursey. You put the sunglasses on, my chain comes out. Guys, ten dollars worthy of sunglasses anymore. I'm uh, gonna you... stare at you with my half of albino face and tell you that I can't pick a fucking winner to save my life. Dude, Billy wins some, lose some. Ten dollars, guys, and you get a minimum of ten. You Billy get up to two hundred and bet. After last week, use bonus code uh, Burr two hundred. Do the uh, survival uh, pool, and we will be back next week, guys. Bet responsibly. Have fun. <laughs>